Right, so I'm going to open this link now to add a printer driver to the system. I'll just check to see if the cups is running. It should be. And what I have to do is the root. And yes, it's running. So this link should work. Yes, there it is. Um, let's see if I can remember how to navigate this. I'll go to administration. Uh, I imagine this would be the root note. Let's try that again. As the oh, right, I need to shut the browser down. So what I'll do is I'll redo that. Uh, let me shut that down and open it in a private window. It shouldn't remember any mistakes that I've made with the password then logging in. So I'll try myself. Right, yes, that's works. Now I imagine that's because I'm a member of LP admin, the line printer admin group. Um, otherwise, if you haven't, if you're not part of that group, you probably wouldn't be allowed to get in. <clears throat> so I'll do add printer. Right, it looks like it's actually discovered the printer on the network automatically, which is probably why there was a, a delay then. So it's probably made it a little bit easier. Um, I don't know what else it would do if it didn't discover it. Uh, I won't share the printer because <clears throat> um, the, the machine it's connected to is not a printer server and if it's on the network it'll be visible anyway, as you've seen. So I'll type in the, or select the specific model number, in fact, actual model number is not there. Um, the model is actually 5300 but that should, oh there it is there actually, yeah it has selected the right one, it's picked it out, okay. Uh, you can also add in a PPD file which I normally do anyway, just the one from the manufacturer but as I say the driver with this, although it said it was um, experimental I, I didn't find any particular problems with it so i'll just add that and it's now been added successfully uh, you can set specific um, settings for the printers like default i'll turn double-sided on for example and that's it so um, Any printing that's done should should go or should come up with that um, printer now. If I try Control P to print that page, yeah, it's come up here with the name of the printer. Um, so in theory, that should print. Um, I'll try it actually just to see if the colours working and everything. Yeah, the printer started almost instantly. I can see that job with this, and there it is. Don't what happens if I click on that? Oh, it just shows details about the the printer itself. And while I'm waiting for that to come out of the printer, um, I'll just tidy this source directory up, which still is still there. Uh, just see how big it is, out of interest. Oh, not particularly big, so the tests obviously just take a lot of time 
processing. Well, yes, it's just tried to do double sided, even though that wouldn't be two pages. It's taken the paper, the page in into the machine twice, and yes, it's printed exactly as it's appeared on the screen. So, and so that that's although it's experimental, it seems to work fine for this particular printer. So that is Gutten Print. So, so I think what I'm going to start to do is to start building up um, some of the um, graphical environments. But um, I think what I might do first of all is do LibreOffice because um, it would make it a little bit easier for me in updating the spreadsheet with the packages that uh, I've been keeping a log of, of installing and rebuilding. Um, just a little, be a little bit easier doing it on the same machine rather than switching between two two machines. So I think I might do that. So I've just got to add Goods and Print to the spreadsheet itself. Yep, that's there. So I'll and it also show that TWM, as you've seen, is perfectly usable as an environment. Yes, it's basic, but it's very lightweight and perfectly usable. Obviously, once you get to know how to use it, it's a little bit different. So let's go into LibreOffice. And let's get that downloading. It's a reasonable size, 267 megabytes. And we've got some dictionaries. Okay, that's taking time to start downloading. Uh, maybe this queued up behind the other one. So I think while that's waiting to download, I'll carry on dealing with the dependencies. And I can see straight away we've got one requirement that hasn't been installed, archive.zip. So let's open that one up. It's a Perl module. So let's see if this will download. Yes, so it must be the remote server that's limiting the downloads. So let's extract. Oh, there it goes. That's the dictionaries. Let's see if we can start the next one, which is help files. And translations. Okay, so per modules. Okay, so we'll copy the build, build and test instructions and install the package, and it's done. Okay, so again, I'll update the spreadsheet so this is LibreOffice and we've just installed archive.zip as a requirement or archive zip That 
looks better. Right, save that. Okay, so that's that one done. <clears throat> and let's look for other ones we need to do. So there's a few here. Uh, looks like C. Leucine is next. Most of these packages are recommended because if they're not installed, the build process will compile and sort its own old or software, often older software. With the side effect of increasing the build and disk install disk space and build time, which makes sense. So let's do C Lucene next. So we'll save that one. And we've also got a patch to install. So we'll right click and save link as. Okay, so the dependencies here we've already got. So the first thing we've got is a patch and a sed command and I'll do the build directory as well. And C make okay looks like there's nothing to add or remove from that so I'll just copy and paste that in. Right, so that is built. So we can now install the package with make install. And that's done. I wonder if there's libraries that Falcon uses in the background and that's why I get this reload the page um, as we're building things maybe some changes are detected by Falcon and that's why it's come up with this reload I've never seen it before and it's only happened a couple of times uh, let's have a look Libby Poxy, Love JPEG Turbo, LLVM um, obviously, like if you're using PostgreSQL, then you can use LibreOffice, the database management, to connect to it. Um, I suppose I could install it, being as it's used by LibreOffice, it's something I don't really use, so I'm not really that um, well versed with it as, a, as one of the large packages. Um, I'll put it in, I guess, just for completeness. Uh, let's do it from here. Though it's, as I say, it's not uh, a necessity. Uh, looks like we've got all the dependencies installed anyway so it's not going to cause a great deal of uh, problems installing it so it looks like we've got to become the root first of all to add a group and user to manage the daemon the server let's extract the tarball Got a set command first, and then a configure command. Let's see if we can 
add anything else to this. There's a few things here. So enable threat safety, open SSL, builds package for support with support for open SSL, encrypt connections, well it sounds like an extremely good idea. Open SSL comes with Linux from scratch, so it's always going to be there. Perl, we can install that. And Python. And TCL as well. So let's see how we get on with that. Okay, let's start the build now. So I'll time this, I'm not sure how long it takes. Oh, it's quite quick. Right, well that's done. Um, it says there are a number of programs in contrib directory. If you're going to run this installation as a server and wish to build some of them, enter make minus c contrib or make minus c contrib sub name for each directory. So let's have a quick look at that. We can uh, have a go at that. There's quite a few in there. Let's see what happens when we do make minus C contrib let's time this as well Test, then it says goes on to mention about well that was quick so there must be tiny little tools um, test must be run as an unprivileged user because they need to start a temporary server and this is prevented as a root user for the same reason you need to stop all PostgreSQL servers if any are running if a previous version of PostgreSQL is installed it may be necessary to use disabled our path we configure to avoid failures. Installing binaries created with a switch not recommended. Okay, so it looks like all we need to do is run make check as a temporary server. We haven't got any previous installations, so there's nothing to worry about. So let's start the tests with make check and wait for that to finish. Okay, it wasn't as long as I thought it might take. Um, it says all 212 tests have passed, so that's that. Uh, note, if you're installing PostgreSQL to upgrade an existing installation, there are important steps you need to follow. So we're not upgrading. So we can skip past this big note and just go straight into the installation. So let's become root, install the program and some documentation. And I guess with this one, if you want to install the contributions, I'm assuming things we've built all of them, we can just do that to install all of them. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, if you intend to use PostgreSQL as a client to connect to a server on another machine, your installation is complete. Well, if you wanted to use it from LibreOffice locally, then you would need to install the server. So let's initialize the server or the database. And then, well, that was the database cluster, sorry. And then initialize the database as a root user with that command and a boot script to start the server at boot time. So let's go back to the BLFS boot scripts and copy those boot scripts in. 
database server can be manually started with the following command as a root user. Um, okay, let's do that. Don't know why they haven't suggested using the init boot script. Um, if you are scripting this part, you should wait for the server to start. Okay, we're not doing that. So we can do some tests as the root user. Okay, so that's the response of the database that's been uh, created. Um, I don't think that's actually deleted the table, is it? Let's see if we can do a command to drop the table. Assuming it's fairly standard SQL language. And bear in mind, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here, but we can try it. In fact, no, what I'll do is I'll leave that there in case I decide to test this from uh, LibreOffice. I'll probably forget about it, but at least there'll be a table there with a few lines of data in it. So I'll just tidy that up. And that's that one done. Uh, next we've got Redland. Which requires Rascal, which requires Raptor, and that's the end of the chain of dependencies. So let's start to download Raptor. So we've got okay configure command we can add ICU support to Raptor by adding this switch here. And run make to build it and make check to test it. And that looks like it's failed. I'll just add the Raptor into the list. Okay, so, oh, it says several of the XML tests may fail. So let's go back and have a look. Uh, it's not obvious what's failed, but it does say just EX57 RDF failed. So it's not obvious what has failed, but there's only a handful. So, oh, actually, that one does actually mention uh, like a XML header string so document so I think that's okay let's do it make install now and that's done on to rascal So just copy and paste for this one, simple enough. Okay, 
It's built. Let's run some tests. Okay, let's finish testing. That didn't look like anything has failed. There's no errors. So let's just install that now. And it's finished. So now we're back to Redland. There's no other dependencies. Do I miss that? Okay, again, it's the same configure and make to build. And run some tests. One of te one test failed. Let's have a look. Syntax error. So again, this may be a UT UTF-8 problem. Let's try running the tests again with lang equals en underscore gb uh, dot um, eight five nine one no that's still uh, is it locale make sure I got that right eight eight five one yeah that was right Okay, one more, I'll just try LC underscore all ENGB eight eight five nine one. Oh it's ISO. I thought it looked wrong. ISO eight eight five nine one. No, that hasn't made a difference, so maybe it's not that. Um There's definitely some problem with encoding. It seems like it's come up with different letters this time. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how serious that is. Yeah, that looks like it there. So whatever an RDF is, there seems to be a 
problem with that free URIs. But I'll install it and um, if there's anything obviously going wrong, oops, then I'll know that maybe there's something to come, needs to come back to here to investigate that a bit further. So Redland complete, mark that off, shut it down, back to LibreOffice, and looks like the last one we've got here is, all oh right, it does say it needs KDE frameworks, which we haven't installed yet. Um, it depends what it needs out of that. Might have to install all of it. Uh, but we'll see see what happens. Let's get this one done. Um, so this needs libg weather. Local D. Let's have a look at this one. Was this a requirement, wasn't it? Recommended. Right, this is requires geocode. Like I say, I'm not really happy about installing code like this, which monitors where, what your location is, um, especially if you're on a mobile device, for example. Um, so it's something I'm not going to install uh, because of that reason. Um, Otherwise, if you're not bothered with that, it's I think it's fairly straightforward installation. It's not a big package. Um, yeah, we've got all those dependencies, so yes, it would be straightforward. So I'll skip that one. Let's have a look at this one. Yeah, that'd be okay to do. So let's open that one up. And download it. Okay. So configure and make. Uh, there's no other no other config options mentioned. Make check. And install the package. So configuration needs, con contains the location and settings files used by like the default suitable. Okay, so it looks like we need to run this. So sudo minus e, paste that script in so that those values are exported to the environment. Then the etc locale file should be generated with that. If you plan to run X or Wayland Windows system, you may want to set up your X keyboard. The best way to do it is to retrieve the settings from etc's console. And feed them to the vlocal D daemon. So it looks like we copy all of this in. This should create and modify the XOR configuration file. The default is etc to match keyboard settings in key maps. So let's have a look at that without the bracket. Yes, it's pulled out GB as you can see there. So that looks like that's worked. So if I quit this, I guess the, I know that's not working right. So what I need to do is come out of here. I'll tidy this up. I'll 
mark this off as completed. So this is Evolution Data Server. Belocal D. Paste that in. Um, right, so if I now come out of the browser, let's shut that down. We've done with that. Come out of the browser and quit the X window session, start it up again. I'm hoping that the keyboard will now be localized properly rather than with the American settings. Yes, it has done. So that's worked perfectly well. Yep, that's good. So let's start Falcon up again. Just minimize that. Put that down there so it's accessible, easily accessible. Back to sources, VLFS. And let's just do bash a few times in case I log out accidentally a few too many times. So BLFS and now we'll do evolution data server. So make a build directory. Copy the CMake command and see if there's anything that needs adjusting here. So we've got that. Enable GTK doc is off. Okay. With libdb off. Right, so we're going to need to change that. Enable OAuth with kit. WebKit, oh that's interesting, didn't WebKit GTK only have instructions for, oh, oh it was 3 and 4, right I thought it was 2 and 3, okay. So use the switch if it did not build WebKit GTK 2 with GTK 4, so we did. So I can't see that switch there. So we don't need to add that in. D with system user, system D user unit. Okay. So we don't need to change anything basically. Oops. All right, what have I done there? Go back. Yep. So press enter there. Right, if I'm to say, all right, okay, so we've got a pass because I've installed the weather um, application which needed the geolocation package. Um, I've got to specific, specifically state that I don't want to install it, so I need to put that in. That's better. So now I'll run ninja and wait for this to build it should only be a minute or so by the looks of it Okay, so that's built, so now I can install it with Ninja. Looks like we install it first and then test it afterwards. And let's do that. Ninja test.
Okay, that's all done. Anything else to do? No. C make minus L, C make lists. Or is that how you do it? I'll keep a little record of that because uh, I've often wondered how to do that. There, what we've done. So, just a little note to myself. So, that's Evolution Data Server. Put that one into the spreadsheet. So I think that's it. Is it? Oh no, there's a couple of little ones hiding away here. Telepathy, Glib is next. Yep, so let's get that one. So we've got a set command to fix something. And then a Python or configure command specifically stating that we want to use Python 3 as well. Enable valid bindings. Yeah, I think we just accept those defaults. And run the build. Okay, that's built. So now we can run the tests. So all okay with the looks of it and install the package and that's it done. So telepathy glib. Shut that down and we go on to the next package which is VLC. This does look like it's the last one. I imagine this is going to have some dependencies. Uh, oh, not too many because we've installed nearly all of them as it is. So it looks like we just need it. We've already got Lua, but it's a different version. So let's do that one next. No other. This is an older version of Lua needed only for compatibility with other programs such as Wireshark and VLC. Okay. So let's download it and the patch, which we save link as to stop it opening in the browser. Lua, see there's two versions of five. And this one is 5.2. So some packages check for the package config file for Lua, which is created with this. So let's generate that. Is there any other options? No. So we just copy all these commands in. <clears throat> Looks like that's done. 
the installations package is complex we use the desktop method of installation so we run those commands and then become root to actually install it and that's done 5.2 so this is for VLC which in turn needs Lua 5.2 Okay, back to VLC, and the next one we need is libmpeg with looks of it. Yeah, there's loads of dependencies here, but because of the work we've already done, there's very little work to do, luckily. So libmpeg. So, don't think there's any other options there to, to use. We'll just copy and paste that. Make checks, run some tests. All one test passed, two are not run, but there was no failures. So, now it's time to install. Done. So that's lib mpeg. Peg two. That's done. And just let's have another scan of this page to see if there's any other dependencies that we could install. Doesn't look like it is, I can't see anything else. So let's now fetch VLC. And begin to install it. Okay, so it's still going. Right, it's done. So extract it, change into the directory, and we've got any. Oh, yes, there's quite a few options here. Look like they're to mostly disable stuff. Um, and as we've got just about everything we can install, installed, I can't imagine there's much to add, add to this. All right, let's see what it says. Um, Switch is required to sell video accessory. Right, okay. Looks like we'll just take the defaults in, as I suspected. Um, this is anything you definitely do want to disable for some reason. Okay, to build VLC and its plugins, type make or compile if you like nice colors. Well, let's just type make because that's what's in the book. 
and I want for it to finish. Okay, that's built, so let's run the tests. So it looks like there's no failures there at all. Everything looked like it passed, it was tested. So let's install the package with that command and we can update the icon cache here with these two commands when it's finished installing, which is now. And we should be able to start this even though I haven't got any media to play but at least we can prove the program's working uh, yep there it is there so that looks fine so I haven't got any media on here so um, when we do get something that will be the time to test it maybe So that's VLC built. Let's tick that one off. VLC. And I think that was the very last one for LibreOffice. So I'm hoping now that to tidy this up, we've got the package downloaded. That should be the one beginning with the number seven. And we'll change into that now. And start to build the packages. So I'm not the other packages, we assume you've not yet unpacked the package, okay. Alright, this is because you know overwrite do is needed in case is needed in case you unpack as the root user. Okay. So let's remove this. And use this command I've got. And I'll just add in the V so we can see the files, just so I get some feedback on what's happening. And then we'll change into the directory. 
So if you've downloaded the dictionary's help and translation tables, create sim links to them from the source directory so they won't get downloaded again. Okay. So that looks all okay. The instructions in the package unpack some tables into a location it cannot find later, create some sim links to help the build system out. Okay, that's a bit strange. During the build process, some packages will be downloaded, including ones listed as recommended and optional, if they're not present on the system. Because of this, build time may vary from the published time more than usual. So it reckons 40 SPU with 8 threads. So let's see how we go. Due to the large size of the package, you may prefer to install it in Opt instead of user, depending on choice for place prefix by user or by Opt LibreOffice 7603. Well, I think what I'm going to do is do what they usually do, which is to install it into LibreOffice and then link to that location. So let's do sudo mkdir. So that's created a directory in um, in the op directory called LibreOffice 7603. And then we do ln minus sv um, slash opt slash LibreOffice to LibreOffice. So now if we look at opt, oh, what have I done there? Oh, I've done it wrong around, haven't I? Uh, hopefully I haven't overwritten anything. That's myself. Yes. Let's see, I don't know if this will work. Let's move that to opt. Does that work? Yes, it does. Okay. So what I should have done is, I think I did that the other way, the wrong way around. Um, always get confused with the ln command. Don't use it often enough. Um, but if you followed what I did and follow the fix, it should work. The last thing it looks like I need to do is to change the ownership to root. as the root, so ls minus l full slash opt, so, uh, what's that done? Okay, I'm not sure what's gone on there. Um, what I'm gonna do, because I, like I said, I'm not, um, all that au okay with links. I'm not sure why the ownership is not changed now. I'm going to remove the link and then I'll look at the man page for LN. Let's make sure I do this the right way around. So it's the target and then the link name. Oh, there's several forms. Is that why I get muddled up? Uh... Right, okay. So it should be ln minus s v. The target is LibreOffice, and the link name will be LibreOffice. So that should be what I need. Oops, ls minus l. Yeah, that's right. I'm not sure why the permissions didn't work, but um, actually doing it in the directory, as you can see, does work. We've now got 
a link from uh, a link called LibreOffice, which points to the actual versioned directory called LibreOffice 7603. Um, so what I'll do now is pop back. I'm actually going to start again because I'm not sure if I overwrote something called LibreOffice. So I'll recall all these commands and start again. So the first one was the tar command. That one there. And then obviously change into that source directory that's created. And install these links, save them being downloaded again, those tarballs, and then some fixes. And then I'm going to export this LO prefix to opt stroke Libra Office that we just created that link. Locales FR and ENGB you'll find below just examples. You should change them to suit your needs. You might want to read me read the command explanations. If you set the AC local environment variable to support installing XORG and OP, you'll need to unset it for this package. So let's see if that is set. Looks like it's not. Let's type it in full. No, it isn't. If you are building on 32 bit machines, C flag is set to OS, which breaks the build, prevent this. Right, okay. If you decide to pass the disable Java to configure, fix an issue that causes the build to fail, so I'm not going to do that. So let's start by putting these two set commands in. Then copy this autogen command. Huge autogen command. So that, as you can see, includes all the dependencies we've built. Let's see what explanations we've got. So with the lang fr engb, this switch sets with languages to support. To list several languages, separate them within space. Four languages use the with lang equal all. Note that translations file is not needed. It won't be downloaded if, if using only enus as a language. So that's hardly surprising. Uh, given that it's probably an American project. So let's jump up here and I'll just leave ENGB in. That's all I need. With help, we've got that JDK equals opt JDK. That's what we've got set. With my spell dicts, that's set. Disable dconf. This switch disables compiling LibreOffice with GNOME dconf configuration system support. Not sure what that is. It must be something to do with GNOME. Um, without JUnit, disables test with deprecated HSQLDB driver, which is written in Java. Uh, without system dicts. Disable ODK. Yeah, we don't need that. Enable release build, yes. Enable Python equals system with system starts. All these systems are including dependencies that we should have exist uh, should have included, including PostgreSQL. Obviously, if it didn't decided not to install that, then that obviously needs to be removed. Um, it's parallelism, so that's all the options for the looks of it. Distro pack install. Okay, it seems like they've added on, they've put like something to do with the installation, and then there seems to be a load more options. So, um,
Let's see. Let's see, for example, this one looks like it could be useful. Oh, the default is to use all available cores in the system. Well, there's no harm in explicitly specifying that. Um, as you've seen, some things can change between versions and the manual doesn't get updated, so it won't do any harm to actually put this in. At worst, we'll get uh, um, an error message saying that that parameter is not recognized, in which case we can just remove it. Disable cups, we don't want to do that. We don't want to disable dbus. Disable Firebird, by default the ability to connect to Firebird database is enabled. Um, <clears throat> I could add that in, I don't think we've got anything like that, I'll leave it off and, unless there's some problem with it. <clears throat> um, Gstream we've got, so I'll leave that in. Disable PostgreSQL SDBC. Um, well, we've got that installed. Display, disable skier, use Cairo for rendering instead of skier. Uh, not sure what that is, so I'll leave that out. Enable GTK, GTK3 KDE5. This switch allows the Visual Class Library, which is responsible for widgets, to be built with K5 file dialogues. If GTK3, Qt5, and Plasma are all available. Okay, well, we haven't got Plasma at the moment. Um, and we've got a complete K, uh, K frameworks, so uh, it'd be nice to build it in, but I'm not sure if it will work or try it. Uh, so maybe the case might have to install the KD frameworks before this package to get the full functionality, especially as the, my, my preferred desktop environment is Plasma. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Enable LTO, this switch will enable link time optimization, which results in slightly smaller libraries. And it's set to make the programs load faster and run faster. On an 8 core machine with 16 gigabytes of memory, the difference in compile times was minimal, but an extra 2 gig was used for the work files. On machines with fewer processors, lack of memory, the compile time might be slower. So I'll stick that in if there's any advantages to be have at runtime. I would imagine eventually it would outweigh the, the disadvantages in terms of space and time at build time. Without Java, um, I'll leave that in, I think. Without fonts, includes a number of third party true type fonts. So I think I'll leave that in. Um, Enable KF5 builds with Plas KD Plasma integration. Again, this may break, so if I do see any errors relating to KD frameworks, then I think I'll build that first. Uh, just put this on pause. Enable Evolution 2, enable support for Evolution to address books for Evolution Data Server. So we have got the data server installed, so we can install that switch. And lastly, enable Qt5, which we've definitely got, so we can add this in. And we've got these variables set as well, so let's see what happens with those switches, see if it stops, so you can't find things. Yeah, KF head is not found, so I think I'm going to have to install KD Frameworks first and then come back to LibreOffice. So what I'm going to do is to load up a new terminal, just leave that other terminal there to do this work in. Um, let's reverse this video and load up a new tab with KD Frameworks, uh, which is 
here. Now it could be that we need to install these preliminaries here actually. So we're going to be moving on to installing half of KDE plasma. Um, so let's go into KDE. Introduction, preliminaries, it explains how it works, that there's this, now this KDE frameworks and then Plasma is a separate thing, but it needs KDE frameworks to work. Uh, CMake modules are already done, it's a phonon we'll need. Um, and it says at least one of phonon backend GStreamer. Oh, let's get this loaded here so we know, okay, it's one of these two. Might end up installing both of them actually. Needs to installed afterwards for multimedia operation in KDE. So we're going to be moving on to those. So, okay, let's go into sources BLFS. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I'll just put it on on top so we can see it's there on top, not obscure everything in the background completely. So I'm going to download this as a small download. And extract it. So this is phone on. Uh, a little p. Just copy and paste the commands to build it in and install it. So that's done. So I'm going to Add that to the spreadsheet. So effectively a little diversion. Uh, right, my browser's not responding now for some reason. Right, there it is. Uh, so we want KDE and we're on Phonon. Okay, so now we move on to the Phonon back end. It says G Streamer or VLC. Um, I can't imagine there being any harm in installing both of them, so I'll do that. Uh, it says recommended GST plugins ugly for MP3 support, so let's install that. Uh, there's no dependencies for that. So, GST plugins ugly. Right, it says DGPL enabled. Okay, it's already in there. Otherwise, some plugins won't be built. Okay, so we do need to copy all that in. And that looks like that's completed. Let's run some tests. So 
have all passed, so now let's install. And that's done. So that's GST plugins ugly. And uh, now we should be in a position to install phone on back end. So again, just copy and paste these. And make install, and that's that done. So that's phone on back end G streamer. So now we'll move on to, I'll do the phone on back end VLC, which is not a problem. As I say, I think in the sound settings, you get the choice to use either of these back ends if they're both installed. So I'm pretty certain they work side by side without any issues. So let's move on to that one. We've got both the dependencies, so let's download the tarball and extract it. This one's VLC. Again, copy and paste the commands. To build it and finally we'll install it. Okay, phone on backend VLC is built and we move on to Polkit QT. So we've got all the dependencies, just download this. And again, straightforward build instructions without a test suite again. And we'll just make install to put it in the system. Polkit QT. Now we've got libdbus menu QT. Just one dependency of Qt itself. Lib dbus Qt dbus menu Qt. Um, again, same thing. Just copy and paste. Unless you want the API documentation, in which case you need to change the with doc to equal on. and install it. So next we've got Plasma Wayland Protocols. Got the single dependency. Again, just copy and paste and make install. It's done. So add that into the spreadsheet and we move on to K user feedback. Again, we've got the dependencies. Let's download and 
once again just copy and paste and install that's done Right, so now we can actually move on to KDE Frameworks 5. Now, bearing in mind, we've already configured this, so we don't need to do um, a lot of this. Let me just put this case of feedback into the spreadsheet. So yeah, this is all the configuration for configuring the directories where we're going to install it. And then this is the part where we actually build the framework. So it looks like we've installed everything there apart from the odd package so it looks like this may be some sort of wrapper for doxygen here it needs a couple of extra python modules okay so char debt is the first one So as usual, we've got this pip command to build the package and this pip command to install the package. And we can test it with that command. So we've got 754 passed and 10 expected failures, so that's all okay. So that's Chardet. And that was Doxy PYPY and Chardet. So now we can build uh, Doxy PYPY. So let's get rid of that. Back to Python modules. Download. Save the file. Extract it. Again, this pip3 command to build, and then this one to install, and it's done. Put that in the spreadsheet, and we can move back to the dependencies for building KD frameworks and the next one we've got is DocsyQML no extra dependencies here so let's download that so build the package 
Install the package. And test it. It says one test may fail. It hasn't in our case with the looks of it. In fact, it's not run anything for some reason. Um, let's do another the config. We run the test. No, it's nothing. Nothing doing there. So there's nothing we can do about that. We'll delete that, and I'll put the DoxyQML package name into the spreadsheet. So it's been built. Back to the KF5 dependencies. Let's see what else needs to be done. Oh, Noto fonts. I just saw that. So we need to install these. In case it's just a description, let's get the Noto fonts and that hack font is quite a nice font. I must admit, I don't use it very often, but when it's enabled, it is quite a nice font to use. Uh, now somewhere here, I think I remember how to use this. We can download a whole lot rather than just browse them. So probably want to go here. It's got to be something easier than this. There's all the fonts, yeah. That's going to be a big page. Well, that one take me to the bottom. Okay, it's my different files on the Google icons. Tell the design, Google design. Um, I suppose. I have installed these ones, but I can't, because it's only once, I can't remember how this is laid out. I presume these are the fonts. Oh, yes, they are. Okay. Right, um, I always have a bit of problem trying to get any other format other than zip. Um, so what I tend to do is copy that link. And I'll download it here. Well, let's try that again. Copy link. Center click to paste. No, it's not center click. Uh, Download link, cancel that. Is it right click? No, it's not. I can't remember how to. Paste the. 
clipboard here it may not even work it may just be the let's open that in a new tab oh that's the hack one uh, I think this only works with selected uh, text. Let's do download. Save. Let's do zip file. Oh, crack it's slow, 23 hours. Well, that's not going to happen. Um, right, I'll cancel that. I'll download. Let's see what it says here. Uh, building. Framework integration. Right, that might be possibly something it won't use anyway, so uh, I'll ignore that for now. Um, Turn that into an icon uh, because like 23 hours is way too long. I don't know why it's so slow. And we'll see if we can get this built without that package. Um, so the easiest way to download the KDE packages is to use a single wget to fetch them all at once. Um, so let's do that. I'm not sure if it's going to put it in a separate directory or not. Let's create a separate directory in case it doesn't. That'd be nice to keep them separate. So I'll wait for these to download. I'm not sure how long this takes to do because they're fairly small but there's lots of them uh, let's have a look at this oh let's see yeah I, I won't bother with that while well, it's downloading Uh, while it's downloading, just mention they've got a, well, it's not so much a steering file, well, it is a steering file, um, but this time it's not used to download the packages as you've seen, they've just used this command, but it is used, um, oh well, as you can see, it's got the MD5 sums, but uh, more to the point, it's, it is used as a steering file to install these in a particular order. So the, the reason why they're in this order is because of dependencies. Um, and it mentions there are certain packages that have been disabled for various reasons. Um, the icon packages are covered separately in these two links. And the CMake modules has already been installed, so they've just been included here for completeness. So it's on oxygen icons at the moment, so I can't imagine there's too many left to download.
Right, so that's um, finished downloading. So let's now generate this. Uh, well, it is a, an MD5 file, but as I say, it is actually a steering file as well. So we'll just copy all of this. Paste that in to there. So the, the X term may have looked a bit messy when it gets pasted in, but you can actually uh, view it just to make sure that it has actually uh, been created properly. So it's called frameworks.md5 and you can see the ones that are remarked are in light blue and the rest that um, will be processed, will be compiled are in white. So that looks all good to me. There's nothing to be adjusted or tweaked with that. So as before with previous multiple module builds, there's an as root function to configure, compile and install each of these packages. So we'll just put that in the system. Um, if you're installing an opt and there is an existing opt KF5 either as, either as a regular directory or a symbolic link, it should be reinitialized. Um, so we're just building into an existing package that's the same, but if you remember, it's just one um, system, um, just one package, which or two, in fact, for K archive and K international internationalization. So, um, in fact, it looks like they haven't even been installed in there. Uh, they're probably installed into user. Yeah, there's only a oh, it's just K internationalization that's been installed there. So K archive must be installed into user uh, because by itself it's it's used by other packages. Um, so let's start a separate shell that will quit on an error, and then we use these uh, commands here to build all the packages. So let's, uh, I wonder if we can time this, can I? Not sure if this will work or not, but let's try it. Yep, yeah, seems to be doing something, so I'll wait for that to finish now.
Right, so that took just over 15 minutes. So now it says to remove. Let's just check, I should check this was set actually. I imagine it is, yeah. Um, move some useless system D units. Sometimes the installation paths are hard coded into installed files. If the installed directory is not used, rename the directory and create a symlink. Okay, so we've done this. Uh, we've done that already, haven't we? So if we look at opt, we've got uh, KF5. Oh no, we haven't. That's probably because we only installed one package. So we'll do this. So now let's look at opt. You can see we've got KF5 pointing at a version directory. So that should be the KDE frameworks. We don't, I wouldn't have thought we'd need to install the um, KDE, frame, KDE frameworks 5 based applications. So I'm going to shut that down now. Come out of this and tidy up. Uh, oh, no, there's nothing to tidy up, is there? Hopefully that's already been done. Yeah, there's no directories there. So I'm going to come out of that terminal, go back to this one, retry the configure command. And now that we've got the KF5 completely installed, and hopefully this will complete this time. which it has done. So that means we can carry on with the instructions for LibreOffice. So all we need to do is run make build next. And I'll time this. Let's see what the estimate is. Uh, 40 SPUs. So, you know, that in theory should be 20 minutes, but it could be longer as we've seen. So, wait for LibreOffice to build and hopefully it'll go through successfully.
Okay, that's finished building, just under 50 minutes. So let's now install the package. That's done. Um, as we installed LibreOffice into Opt, we need to put these commands in to create some links by the looks of it. And then update desktop database. And that should be it. And it says here how to start it. You can just run LibreOffice to get the main package which is not working it's probably because I need to re log in um, to get the path working so I'll just do that and try it again uh, no it's not working so why is that uh, any more setup to do? No. Let's just check these. So let me go back to where I was. Let's just echo that low prefix. Yeah, that's still in. Spell it correctly. Opt. Oh, it, I bet it's the fact that the SU minus E doesn't seem to be working as expected. Um, SU. Um, echo. Hello. Oh, that is there. Okay, that is there. Um, so let's look at dollar. Hello. Prefix. Lib. LibreOffice program. So S Office hasn't been installed. Yeah, this if command hasn't run the looks of it or run correctly, the yellow prefix should be in front of this bit here. Uh, oh no, that's right, opt LibreOffice. Lib. LibreOffice program. S Office. I oh, know this should be the link, shouldn't it? That should be the link here, yeah. and it's broken because S Office hasn't got installed. So, for some reason, let's rerun this again, see what the output of that is. Cleaning output tray. Yes, installed it into uh, 
Ah, oh, it looks like... The binaries have changed name. They're called Hello Base, Calc, Draw, Mass, Impress, Web, Writer, etc. They used to be called this S Writer and so on. Um, S Office. Yeah, there's the links, and LibreOffice is pointing to, oh, that's what we've just installed, isn't it? To use a bin. Let's see what it says at the bottom. I oh, know it's got the right names there. Libre Office or S Office. Oh, is it creating S Office as an old compatibility link? Uh, well, I'm just a bit confused as what was what's gone on here. Um, I think I'm going to remove. That RM the LibreOffice link and S Office rerun the install. Let's make sure that's complete. All right, so the package puts these sim links in. Skip ordering sim link up to LibreOffice bin LibreOffice, and that points to S Office, and S Office points to S Office, which doesn't exist. Right, and then these sim links point to user bin. LibreOffice, but LibreOffice points to nothing because it points to S Office and then S Office points to itself. to opt well that's wrong as well that link um, that's something I've done I'm going to 
delete all of this. Oh, right, okay, we've now got a separate lever. I thought I'd created a sim link there. Um, I wonder if I've done something wrong or out of order here, and that's why everything's got a bit messed up. Oh yeah, there's stuff in there as well. So how do we configure this? We configured it to Oh, Autogen is what started it. Prefix was LO prefix and LO prefix is just opt LibreOffice and what did they did I, I think I did something out of step here. Ah, uh, right, I set LO prefix to equal just LibreOffice, but they set it to 7603, and I think that was because I've already created the um, sim link. So that may be why that's happened. Right, so if I, in theory, become root again, hello prefix is still set. So if I rerun this, then run this. Let's do one of these at a time. So let's put that in then echo dollar hello prefix. This should this should um, output hello prefix because it's true. And then the yeah, which is done. So it will it will run all of these. So if I do the first one, that's linked. User bin LibreOffice to that. So let's look at user link. Uh, user bin LibreOffice. So LibreOffice, yeah, points to S Office. S Office. Isn't now a program, but looks it, so that looks a bit better. So yeah, I must have done something wrong. Where's my other lib? Oh no, this is in the lib directory. That does look a bit better now. Generate location of the version number. So this is probably the bit that's messed around because I've um, messed about with the version number. I didn't do it as, as per the instructions. Let's do this bit first, because that should work correctly, because LI prefix is independent of the instructions at these points. Um, 
that's that one and that as well and set I so uh, LibreOffice should now work yeah there it is Yeah, that's better. That wants to use as much of the screen as possible. Yeah, that's that looks better now. Yeah, so it's all because I didn't follow the instructions exactly and didn't use a version directory. I just went for plain old LibreOffice. So what we've got to do now is to go back to the root back to opt right we've still got two directories there unfortunately now oh they've both got the same idea um it might be simple for me just to rebuild this rather than try and fathom out what's going on uh Let's move well, LibreOffice, the version one should be the older one, so if I move that to LibreOffice like that and check that the LibreOffice yeah, command still works, which it does. And these should work. That one does. So that should be okay. And let's try the S office because that looks like that should work as well. No, it doesn't. No, okay, maybe that was a library then. Uh, what does it say here? Oh, LibreOffice module to start the other modules. So let's try off uh, LO calc. No, that's obviously the wrong name. Oh, just one of base calc draw and press, right? Okay, so so does that mean LO calc should work on its own? No. So just calc. Yeah, that's come up, and that is working. Okay, so all it does look like it's working. So all I need to do is to uh, quit that. is to go back to root and opt and move the LibreOffice directory to LibreOffice the version directory and then ln minus sv LibreOffice 76 to LibreOffice Right now, if I run LibreOffice, LibreOffice, that should still work. Yep, it does. So it's purely because I, oh, I don't know why that's come up a bit different now. Oh, it's because I closed down. Oh, I don't know why that is. But at least I can set it to a better size. But yes, that's now working a lot better yeah, I'm not sure why that's coming up so small let's try and count this time that's fine that's strange uh, let's try the base one yeah, that's fine. Okay, so it's working. Um, it's behaving a little bit strange maybe, but it, do, it does seem to be working. So what I need to do is to 
remove from opt the LibreOffice version that's broken. Um, I'll rerun this update desktop database again in case that might have problems. Okay, and that should be it. So what I'll do now is tidy that up. And I'll save and send over the spreadsheet. So I'll close that down here. And now the computer. I can't remember where I put it. Let's just check that. Right. So I'm just trying to find it now, uh, LFS. Right, so if I now send that to this machine, um, Didn't do that, did it? Let's try it again. Uh, what's happened there? Let's try it again. but not okay that should be there now uh, squiggle yep there it is um, right the reason why it's got executable permissions is because I actually had it on a Samba share so I need to change permissions of that so mod U minus X BLFS twelve. Okay, so now if I load up a terminal and do Libra Office minus minus calc. It's really strange, it's coming up with tiny windows for some reason. Right, that's there. Um, I should put that into the background actually. So if I do Control Z and then do BG to put it into the background, I can close that window down now. And now I should be able to do File, Open, and reload this 
spreadsheet and yes there it is so I can carry on updating that now the only thing is is using the windows on TWM is a bit of a pain um, can I get a window list here oh yes that's the one I need isn't it so I'll keep that to hand in case it gets hidden but apart from that I'll just keep this in the middle hopefully I'll be able to get to it otherwise I'll have to use this icon manager to switch to it um, right so yes that's done um, so what I need to do is to shut that down and probably the best thing to do is to go back to uh, maybe actually to complete KDE now I've started that um, it wasn't my original intention but it might be the best thing to do um, What I normally do is install like some of the um, display managers, then the window managers, then go on to the larger packages because these tend to pick up some of the other packages that the larger desktop environments use. So it's quite convenient to do it that way. Um, it just depends on how awkward it's going to be with this spreadsheet here. It's certainly going to be a little bit easier than having it on a separate machine but it's just the case of there's no facility to alt tab between the windows um well i think because these are so basic i might just install them and see how i go because i don't think they can take too long to install um saying that looks like gdm might do I might skip GDM. I might just go straight for light DM because it is quite a quick one. Um, I'll do SDDM when I do KDE because they are kind of related. So yeah, I think I'll do light DDM first of all. Get that working and then move on to the window managers. Um, I'll do GDM when I do the GNOME desktop. I'll do an SDDM. DDM when I do the KDE desktop because I say each of those are related to those desktop environments. Um, like DM's good on its own, it'll work with anything and it's small and simple, so it'll be good to get going with that. So, yeah, let's do this next. So, open a new tab. Um, so, there's a few dependencies here. So let's get this XO downloaded. What's this? We can get rid of that. So you can see already this needs part parts of XFCE, which we're going to be installing later. So it just means that XFCE will be built a little bit quicker. So this needs XFConf. And libxfc for util. And we're at the bottom of the dependency list, so we can start installing now. So let's download that. And let's copy the name and put it into here. So you can see I've got pin entry here, that's actually required after KDE has been installed. Uh, to be rebuilt so I'll just put a few more empty lines in here so we can now do libxfce so that's the trouble with these windows you've got to click on the title bar to get them to the front focus um, so that should have downloaded see now that is what I was worried about the spreadsheets hidden 
So we go lib x f c e for util so configure and make and install it, make install. That's done. Right, I think what I'll do, because this is going to get quite a bit of a pain, is to reduce this window to about that much. And then I'm going to position this down here. that back and that should be sufficient to have that there and that will do for now until I get to a desktop environment that gives me alt tab to switch quickly between windows so that's libxfc4 let's save that make sure that works all right seem to work yeah so now I can install xfconf Just like cases, it comp. So these are straightforward packages by the looks of it, which is handy for us. So sudo minus e make install, and that's done. Close that down. So start up notification next. Download that. Okay. Again, the straightforward instructions to build this. And that's done. Oh, let's do that as the ordinary user. Close that one down, and next we've got libgtop. So it looks like we've got all the dependencies for this one. So configure and make, there's an option there to build the API documentation, which as you know, I'm not using. And we'll install that. And that's complete. that down before I carry on I just remembered I'm going to change the option to do an auto save in case anything crashes so that save every minute Right, that's strange. I'm not sure why this keeps coming up as a small 
window it's got smaller and smaller so that's presumably a bug somewhere uh, have we from recent files is it this one no file recent there it is okay and I'll resize it up here Okay, so now we're on to libxfce 4 ui So let's download that. And again, straightforward instructions. Build, uh, sorry, install, and that's done. So back to XO, and looks like we've got everything installed now by default. Looks like this util was built along the way for building UI. So let's download this. Figure and make. And as you can see, we can do some tests on this one. can install it because that was all successful. That's done. Close that one down. Back to light DM. Next one we need is libx clavier. So it looks like we've got all the dependencies for this one. and just copy the compile instructions and install it done now we've got account service is a runtime dependency so we'll get that up ready to install after we've done like DM uh, and yep, now we are ready to install it. So let's download the package itself. And it says the greeter is a program to present a graphical login screen. There are several alternative greeters, but the GTK Plus package is a reference implementation for a list of others. See here. So let's do the reference one then. Makes sense. And it looks like we start by installing the daemon. And then change the Linux PAM configuration file so that eLogin D is used. Oh. We should do the uh, extract the package first. 
I would like the M1.32. So now we can do that said and copy the configure command. Check to see what other options there are. There's nothing mentioned, so let's get that going now. Okay, that looks all sane. Let's build it. And that's built now as the root user. We install the package. Oh, I didn't do that right, did I? That's better. Install the package. And next we build the greeter, so I can just copy and paste all of this in as the ordinary user. And install that as the root. If you installed Xorg in Opt, you'll need to create a symbolic link, so like DM can find the Xorg server. So I can never remember this because I know it used to be in Opt. And I think the default is now in user, isn't it? Yes, it's not at Xorg. So we didn't install it in Opt, so we don't need to do that command. Right, so we can install these startup scripts. The only thing is with the GDM and well, I don't know about the GDM for sure, but certainly with the SDD, I'm pretty sure that's got boot up scripts. So we'd have to disable one or the other, I imagine, to make sure they work. But we'll see if, you know, that does cause any contention. I have to remember we've got startup scripts for these programs. So let's become root. And change back to blfs boot scripts and put that into install the startup scripts now i'm not going to run this now because it means i'll have to set up all these windows again it's well not that hard but um it's just something i can test later when i test the new uh, window manager for example so i'm not going to bother with that now so I'll leave that up for a moment um, and I'll, no, I'll close it down. I'll build this account service next, so let's, which was a runtime. I think, I can't remember if it was an optional requirement or not, but it was for like DM. So save that, let's tidy this up. to extract oops account service to rename a directory fix some tests fix another test and we can Build it in a temporary directory with this command here to configure it, and we'll see what other options there are in case we want to add anything. So, two switches for API documentation, and no, I don't need anything else apart from what's there. Uh, so, let's build the package. That's all done. Install it. 
configure and count service to allow the ADM group to be listed as administration administrators execute from commands as the root user. So we didn't actually add in a new user, do we? ADM group, no, it must already exist. So sudo minus e su, paste that in, and that's done. So that's the uh, LightDM Display Manager. <clears throat> so now I'm going to install the Window Managers. I'll start with Fluxbox. Uh, better check to see there's nothing. Just a bit of information here about the Window Managers. So it tries to give a description of the difference between a window manager and the desktop environment. The basic difference is that a desktop environment is more of a, more of a complete uh, system that you install. A window manager is literally that. It just manages the windows. There's no um, extra packages uh, such as a browser or a file manager or anything like that. Um, or or a, um, you know, a suite of programs that form a, a fully blown desktop. <clears throat> a desktop environment is just that. It includes other programs like a graphical viewer, browser, file manager, that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's, it's complete package to work at a desktop, whereas the window manager is more about the appearance of the programs. Um, and as it says there, the choosing a window manager or desktop environment is highly subjective. Um, so generally, if you want a lighter weight experience, then a window manager is what you want. And if you want a more um, fuller experience, if you like, a more complete environment, then a desktop environment is probably more, more what you want. So let's go back to Fluxbox. And we need to install imlib2 by the looks of it to use other image formats in addition to XPM. So let's get that up. We've got all the dependencies, so we can install it immediately. Uh, let's open that in a new tab in case it, yep, it does go quite annoying that. <clears throat> Save it and close that tab down now that easily. Uh, so tar minus xvf im lib2. Configure and build. And install it. It's done. And there's no API documentation to install, so I'll go back to Fluxbox, download the Fluxbox software. Okay, that's going to do that again, is it? Let's open it in a new tab. for it to find a mirror that's going to work for us. It takes quite a while. Um, right, I don't know why that's not popped up. Let's try it again. Just click here. Uh, let's try the German ones normally quite fast. That's good. OK, 
Okay, so let's extract the flux box and put this set in. What does this do? Oh, fixes a build failure. Configure and make. There's no other options. and install it. And that's done. So I'll tidy that up. Now it says for configuration, at the moment we're using StarTex to start the um, GUI up. So if you were to continue using that way, you'd put Fluxbox in your own X in it RC or maybe the system wide one if you wanted to make Fluxbox the default <clears throat> because we've installed like DM and we will be installing GDM as I say um, if you add this in as the root it will appear as an option on the, the um, desktop manager so you can select which environment you want to use whether it's a window <clears throat> a window manager or a desktop manager, a desktop environment, sorry. So let's do that so that it becomes available. Um, if you didn't install GDM or like DM in user, then change that command to fit the prefix you chose. As far as I know, we didn't change that. Um, let's just check to see if there was anything that was using any of the variables that we've been using. No, it went into user, so there's nothing else to change there. Now create the Fluxbox configuration file. So we'll do this as the ordinary user, because it, as you can see, it's referring to a hidden file or directory in the home directory. To generate the application menu, you may wish to run Fluxbox Generate Menu H in order to choose any user options, then issue that command there. Right, well, I haven't got any user options that I know of, but let's, let's run this. I'll just run the Generate Menu. Let's put help in, see if that does anything. No, it doesn't. Uh, minus H for a long help message. So KD menu, no menu. I suppose we could do that. Minus G minus K. Enable sudo commands, that might be useful. So let's put them in minus G K. Minus SU. Yeah, let's put these in separately, be safe. Looks like you can specify a favorite terminal. We've only got one at the moment anyway, so that's the favorite. Same with the browser. So I might want to re rebuild this, or rerun this after some more options have been installed. So it's created a menu for us by the looks of it. Or you can create or copy a pre-generated menu. So that might actually be better at this stage because there's not a lot installed. If you want to use an image as your desktop background, copy the theme you like in Fluxbox. And it tells you the instructions there how to do that. So I think I might try this out now see if it's uh, any more usable than TWM is in, term of, in terms of switching applications quickly. So I'll save the spreadsheet. I'll quit. Um, I'll quit this. Restore that and do Control D to quit that. 
Um, one thing I've got to do is to tidy up flux box. Oh, I had done. Right, okay. Um, and because I've added some boot scripts, I think what's best here to do is to do control D and do a complete reboot, let the boot scripts start up, uh, make sure they behave as we'd expect. So I'll just wait for this to reboot now. Okay, well, for some reason, the light DM hasn't started, which is a bit strange. So let's log in as kernel text. Um, can't even remember if there's anything else I needed to do to start that off now. Or did I not install it? I thought I did. Let's become root. Right, no, I didn't install it with the looks of it. So that's why. So I'll go to BLFS, BLFS, boot scripts, do make, uh, let's do VI make. I edit the make file, I hopefully will be able to see the targets. So if I look for light DM, yes, it's, in, it's called install light DM. So I'll copy that. Come out of this and do make, uh, paste that in, install light DM. Yeah, that, that's what, uh, oh right, okay, it's XDM it's called, so what I think is probably best to do is to reboot again, see if it starts up now. Right, so it's still not starting. I'm not sure why that, that is. Um, there may be something else to do. Um, uh, let's... XDM, it was status. Oh, that's strange. Right, well, that's the light DM that started. So I wonder why that didn't work automatically. Um, Bet there's something else I need to do to get that to work properly, so I might have to do some reading somewhere. Uh, so basically, if I log into this um, now, somewhere you should be able to choose. Oh, there is only Fluxbox, so strange that TWM hasn't come up. Then that may need one of those desktop files to appear in there. But if I log in, that is Fluxbox, and there's the menu. So if I Get up office. All right, so the LibreOffice hasn't appeared. It's found links, but looks of it. 
Not sure why it isn't found office. It's got a window manager there, will that run? Yes, it is. It's loading that window manager now. Or it's tried to load it and failed. Um, right, so I think what I need to do is get X term up. Now this is a bit more usable. Um, let's do a reverse video. And I'll get Falcon up in the background. So you can see that Falcon remembers its own position. So that's why it's placed. In fact, it's probably pushed itself down a little bit because I don't know if you can see there's a little grey border that's probably, I don't know, five or ten pixels wide. Um, the looks of it, or uh, maybe not. Maybe it wasn't positioned totally accurately before in TWM. Um, so now I need to get the LibreOffice calc up. Right, that hasn't shrunk, so it must have been something to do with TWM. The reason, oh, okay, maybe it has. Let's resize that, close it down. See if it, yeah, it has remembered its size now, so that's good. So it must be something to do with TWM. So I can just nicely alt tab, can I? Yes, I can now, so that's a bit more convenient. So I'm gonna open that document again. Flux box, yeah, that's good. So I just need to find out why the light DM is not loading. Um, there is actually a default theme for the flux, uh, not for flux box, for light DM. So I don't know why that hasn't appeared, and it's just a black background, but um. Yeah, that's obviously some reason for that. Um, let's try changing this default menu. Right, I didn't put this in the background again, so I'm going to stop that. Type BG to put that in the background. I'm going to do that and see how the menu's changed. No, it hasn't changed unless I need to restart. Let's do restart here, reload the config. No. Let's try doing restart. No, it still hasn't found or isn't coming up with um, Office. So I don't know why it's not found that unless Fluxbox is, Fluxbox is looking for the old style uh, binaries where they begin with S, like S Office or S Writer, S Calc, etc. And that's why it's not found them because it's found GIMP. Yeah, that's loading fine. And as you saw, it's found Inkscape as well, and that's loading fine as well. So that's the only reason I can think of why Office is not in the menu. So it might have to be added manually. Um, as to why uh, LightDM is not starting automatically, let's have a look again at this page. See if there's any configuration that didn't do. Did that. Can we start to available sessions? Oh, do we have to install that, do we? Use us share X sessions. Okay, so the only one I've got at the moment is Fluxbox, so that's probably why TWM didn't work. Um, let's change the user, share, accessions, and add TWM. Let's just check to see if 
TWM hasn't already. Oh, right, I need to open another window, don't I? If TWM hasn't already got a desktop file to copy from, no, it hasn't. So let's copy. Oops. Right, I've got to remember now it's not the focus that follows the mouse. I've actually got to click on the window. I've been used to TWM for the past couple of weeks. The past week or so. So CD, let's see where I am. PWD, CD, user, share, next sessions. CP, flux, box, desktop to TWM dot desktop. And we'll edit that. So we'll call it TWM. And I believe the ex executable is just called TWM. So in theory, it should be that simple. Uh, and I didn't change the description. The tabbed. Window Manager. Pretty certain that's what TWM stands for. So that's that. Um, let's now go to um, Xorg and Xinit to see about how things start. To automatically start XORG with the first available terminal. Right, that's to start it manually as we have been. Um, I wonder if changing the X11 X in it. Oh no, there's an application now, isn't it? Defaults X in it. RC. I wonder if we need to. Possibly disable all of these now. Um, let's see if that makes any difference. So I'll come out of this now. I'll close that down and that one. And that one. Let's exit Fluxbox. This should go back to LightDM. Yes, it does. I'm going to use this. All oh, right, we can't even shut down the Hibernate here. Okay. That's interesting. I wonder if it's because there's other GNOME dependencies that would enable that, as some of these files were based on GNOME. So that's probably, oh, well, TWM's appeared anyway. Let's try it. So TWM is activated, yep. So let's go into there. Yes, it has. It's that That is basically TWM. You get nothing up because I disabled all the other options, I imagine. We're not getting anything. So I have to left click to get the menu up and start doing things from there. So that is why I need to exit to leave this session and that should take me back to the LightDM logon which it has done. So what I'm going to do also now is to, I've just gone to terminal one, just do control C there. I think that's, yeah, that's disabled LightDM. I'm going to come out of the root and kind of take, try another restart, see if that XDM will start. If not, I've probably missed something in the book or there's something yet to come that will enable that. or have done something slightly differently that's preventing it from working correctly. Right, so it still hasn't come up. So it does indicate that um, 
there's something a little bit broken. Okay, I can't do that, so I have to be sudo. It's definitely working, it's just the uh, startup's not working. So I'll select fire, uh, flux box and I'm back in again. So I'm going to take a break now and during the break I might have a look to see if there's anything I've missed but otherwise if not we can carry on, uh, probably carry on in flux boxes, it's a bit easier to use in TWM. Um, Let's see if that's working now. No, that's not. Let's try doing start. No, they're still not working. Okay, I'm not even sure why that's not central, unless that's deliberate. So, yeah, I'll um, carry on in the next session. Right, I looked into the problem where um, LightDM wasn't auto-starting, and I realised that it's to do with the init tab um, not being reconfigured, which it needs to be. Um, basically, the default when you set up Linux from scratch is that it sets the run level to three which is multi-user console um, uh, run level but for an automatic graphical start you have to set it to run level five which is multi-user graphical run level so the change is quite simple um, if i log in as root if we edit etc init tab all we need to do is to change this first line here, the init default, which is the default run level at boot up. All we need to do is change that from three to five. And that is it. So if I now control delete to restart, when it comes up again, it should boot straight into the light DM screen, ready to log on. And there you go, it's gone straight into Light DM, and I can log in, and there's the Fluxbox desktop. So what I'm going to do is to carry on now. Now fix that bit. Um, let's see if we've got, no, we haven't got Falcon here either, unfortunately. So what I'll do is I'll get the next term up, and as before, I'll just start these processes from here. So Falcon, put it in the background. Oops. And I'll start an X term. And I'll start the the office with the spreadsheet running as well and I'll put that into the background just minimize that because uh, we'll get, be getting messages printed up on that screen and I'll, I'll grab this in the corner here yeah. just stretch that down to here change that to reverse video Load up the spreadsheet. I'll just reduce this a little bit. There's no need for it to be this big. That should suffice. Leave that there and we can go back to installing the other window managers. So the next one we've got is ISWM. And 
that's got one dependency, Libio. And that's ready to be installed on its own. So let's copy this into the spreadsheet. Download the tarball and change into sources BLFS libao uh, cd libao and again it's quite simple install There's no test suite to run, so we'll just come root and install the package, and that's done. And now we can install ISWM. There's no extra options, it just explains one there to turn link time optimization on. So we'll just copy and paste the commands to build this. And that's done. Become root to install, and we can remove one of the two desktop files that are installed. Configuration. Again, you can point it at the X in the RC, otherwise it should start to, um, should appear. Oh no, it's uh, window manager we're doing, isn't it? So we can skip that because we'll leave it um, system wide um, and it should be able to be selected on the login screen. So I'll just create the configuration files. These are all for the user. So we'll come out of root. You can see they're pointing to home directory. So that will be for the user. You can edit these files. Use logout, restart, SWM on the main menu to load to change preferences. Um, well, perhaps the best thing is to go into it. So if I save that. No, I'll tell you what I'll do. Is I'll install the other window managers and do them all at once rather than keep faffing around. Um, loading up the windows and so on um, to run the program command line for installing or removing programs so every time you install or remove programs with ISWM you have to update the menuing with this command here I suppose there's no harm in um, doing that now. If you wish to put icons in your desktop, you need to install a program such as Rocks Fire, which provides a pin board. If you do that, you'll no longer have access to the menu bar right click on the desktop, but you'll have use to use the ISWM button to ensure that Rocks pin board is running before the commands from the startup. Okay, so I won't bother with that. Um, I'm not going to be using ISWM anyway, but you've got that option if you do use a desktop to put files on. 
So that's Ice WM. The next one we've got is Open Box. That's got one dependency there. So PYXDG. Let's download that. Tidy this up. G. and there's no test for this but looks of it so we just build the package and install and that's done So let's download open box. Oh, I forget to left click on these windows. So Faxorg is not in user, let's check that. Faxorg underscore prefix. So it is in user, we don't need to do that. If you only installed the Python 3 PYXDG module, convert one of the scripts to Python 3. So let me take that out. Like that ran. So we've got configure command. And is there anything else to change? No, it doesn't look like it. We'll just run that in. And then, oops, make to build. And install this package creates three desktop files in the sessions directory so we can have a look at that you can see the other ones there uh, three yep was there two of these are not appropriate to BLFS systems so prevent the extra files showing up as options in the display manager so we'll remove them um, on some system I'm not sure about GNOME but I have certainly seen KDE and uh, Openbox uh, used together so sudo minus e remove those GNOME and KDE versions of the desktop configuration Openbox is right click menu can be used to launch programs the menu itself is configured with two files to make changes to the menu so it tells you how to edit the menu there. Um, starting open box. Again, you can modify X in it RC. If you want to set a background image to your desktop, you can use display to launch it. So it shows you how to do that. Edit, edit the in it RC in your home directory. Um, if you want to add a bit of writing, put a selective selection of images in that folder. Um, and if you'd have, like to have the numlock key set when you start xorg, install numlock x and add that to your x in it, rc. And another useful application is dbus, so I'm not going to make any of those sort of changes. So that's open box. So I need to add that to the spreadsheet. And finally, do sawfish, which needs a dependency, which needs another dependency. So lib rep. Don't 
Download that. Wrap and straightforward installation. Install. And that's done. So back to Rep GTK. Add that into the spreadsheet. Download it. And extract. Simple build. And install. That's done. And finally we can build Sawfish. Download that. So straightforward configuration. Install the package. And again, there's a uh, different um, different accessions that have been installed, many of which we don't need. So just going to delete them. It's all the ones that got sawfish dash something to so to use with other windowing uh, uh, desktop environments. So we'll put this in to remove those and just leave the sawfish one, sawfish.desktop. And again, you can add this to your X in it RC if you're starting um, your window manager by hand with StartX, your GUI system by hand with StartX. Otherwise, we'll carry on using whatever desktop manager we've got, display manager. Um, you must middle click the background to bring up the menus. Okay, so that's the window managers completed. So I'll install these icons as and when we need them, which will come up. Um, I think what I'll do next is go to LXDE because it's one of my favorite, well, yeah, it is one of my favorite light, light desktop environments and build that next. Once I've got that installed, I'll show the other uh, window managers and then build the rest of the VLFS via LXD or KDE if I decide to do that at some point. So that's Sawfish done. And did we put that in? Yes, we did. So I'm going to go to LXD next. LXT desktop. Um, it 
it says it's extremely fast performing and energy saving desktop environment. Comes with beautiful interface, multi language support, etc. Um, I think somewhere in I've read, I'm not sure if it's in the change log, um, it does say that this is the last time that LXDE will be in the book. Um, let's have a look. Change log. It may be on the web page if it's not actually in the manual. No. Yeah, perhaps it's on the website then. Um, I'm sure I've read somewhere that it says it will be the last um, version. Uh, I thought this was missing the title bar. It's been pushed off the screen. Uh, can I move this? Yes. Maximize our profile range lower. Um, oh, I close it down there. Let's try and reload it. In the background. That's better. I've got a title bar now. Um, so anyway, yeah, this might be the last time we see it. So I'm going to particularly interested in installing it if it is the last time I'll be building it myself. So we'll just go through these. It does say that these packages are presented in the correct order to install. So we'll just follow this through. Okay, this is... Going to be a bit of a pain. I have to keep an eye on this source forge. Right, save that. And yeah, it's not letting us go back for some reason. Right, I have to open that again. I have to keep an eye on that, it's quite a pain. Right, so let's extract LX menu. So we'll just configure and make and then install. And that's done. Move on to lib fm extra. Let's see if we can get it. There's no other mirrors coming up at the moment. Maybe maybe it will get there in the end. Let's try and open the other ones as well. Yeah, download them. Okay, is it the internet that's gone then? It's taking a bit too long. Yes, it's my internet that's gone, that's why it's taking so long now. So save that. Get lib 
FM next. This is Man FM. that one let's see how we're going then I'm not sure what I've got here now let's look for right that's that one so we should be doing lib FM extra next lib FM Lib FM. So configure and make. Uh, disabling GTK because it's not necessary for this package. So yeah, there's no other options to set. We'll just copy this all in. And install the package. Oops. That's done. So next is menu cache. Menu cache that's downloaded with the looks of it. So menu cache. Um, we've got the patch, I think. LibFM Extra. That's the one we've just installed, isn't it? Yes, so. Oh, that's interesting. That's libfm, and yet we just installed libfm extra, I thought. Let's go back. libfm 132. libfm 132. Oh, I see. So it's actually because of this switch, then I presume. Okay, that makes sense. Um, let's get rid of that now. So we've done a little FM extra, so we can do menu cache, right? Okay, a bit confusing that having the same patch file. Um, so we need to put the patch in first. Right, that didn't save, so let's. Do that again. Save link as. Recall that command. That's better. Enable you to get doc for API. So we don't want that. So we'll just copy and paste this. And install. So that's menu cache done. Right. I've just realised I haven't been doing my spreadsheet because it's so quick. So libfm extra. And menu cache. So let's just check what we last did. We did the install. So let's tidy up. That's so the next one is libfm. So it's the same package, but it's got different requirements and it's going to be built differently, obviously. So looking at these, we've got LX menu data because that was the first of the packages we built. So we can put libfm in now. Let's put some more blank lines here. Probably need quite a few actually. So let's extract libfm again. And 
then we build it looks like without that other switch now was gtk3 so it's version of gtk to use the default is gtk plus dash two so i imagine it's probably more beneficial to use gtk3 let's try it and i'm not worried about the api so let's build it like that It's built, run some tests, and install. And that's done. So PC Man FM is next. So it looks like we've got two of these have popped up. So did it download what's it called PC Man FM? Yes it did. Um all oh right we need some icons first of all. So I'll tidy that up. Oxygen icons five or LXD icon theme. Well there's no harm in installing both of them. So let's do both. Let's get that downloading. Oxygen icons. Oh, it's still going. Oh, looks like that patch got stuck, so I've cancelled that. Right, oh yes, this is quite a big package, so just give that a chance to download. While that's going, let's look at the other one to download. I imagine this one's a lot smaller. Yeah, it was a lot smaller. Let's get that one downloading. Oh, it's gone there again. Separate tab. So again, this D acts quite slow. Yeah, it's finally appeared. Save that. And we'll build the oxygen icons then. So uh, that's in there. Let's now extract the package. Enable scalable icons. And install icons. Well, it's actually build the package not installing it the install is the last part so we'll configure in fact it gets configured and built all in one go by the looks of it so run that extra C make modules thought we had that this is a different version so now let's just install the package. Make install. And that's done. So that's oxygen icons. Now let's install some LXDE icons. that in the book so we'll configure first is there anything else no there's nothing else to configure the 
there's nothing to build, so we'll just put in the oh, make install command. And if you've installed one of the optional dependencies, run the following command as yes, we have. So let's put that in. That didn't work, did it? So do we want to say that's better? So that's the LXD icons. Uh, get rid of that, we don't need that anymore. So PC Man File Manager. You must use this switch if you've built LiveFM with, so we did build with GTK3 support, so we need to mirror that setting here. So we'll put that in and press enter. Build the package and install it and that's done. Next, uh, are we still in LXD? Yes, we are. LibWNCK next. So let's get that downloading. We've got all the optional dependencies and all the recommended, etc. So let's extract. Uh, is there any other options we need to put in here? No, it doesn't look like it. So I'll just copy and paste and configure and build it. And install. So let's tidy that up. LX panel next. So this needs key binder. Save that. Uh, disable lure is needed because it's currently broken because the older lure version is required. Okay, so we'll just configure and make as it is. and build. That's done. Next we've got GNOME screenshot. So we've got all the dependencies for this. Put that into the spreadsheet. No screenshot. So we've got said to fix the build, mise on build file and just copy and paste the compile instructions and install done so 
There's no screenshot. Did I add that in? Yes, I did. So next we've got wireless tools. Now let's see how much this needs. Configuring the kernel for wireless. Uh, I can't remember if I had to set that up or not. Let's take a peek at the kernel. Um, CFG80211 WX. So it doesn't look like, oh, I've misspelled it. Is not set. So as I'm not really interested in installing wireless tools in this build, I'm not going to uh, bother installing that. Because um, it looks like it's not going to build without the kernel being set so I'll give that a miss otherwise as you can see it's, it's although it's recommended it's not necessary so I'll download LX panel put it into the spreadsheet Save the table and extract it. So installation is straightforward. Oh, what's happened here? Looks like something live FM GTK require by virtual world. Uh, right, I wonder if it's because I selected GTK3. So let's try and reconfigure that option. Uh, not there, that's the make command. In fact, I'll get rid of the make command so I can see what happens at the end, in case it does work. No, it's not that. Checking for package, no. Error package requirement GTK3 libfm GTK. Alright, so that needs version 3 of libwnck, but we only installed it version 2. So it looks like to me we can only install the GTK versions of those earlier packages from what I can see so I think I'll rebuild them and just use GTK2 that's probably a bit of a bum steer really if there's no clue as to what to do for this package for example um, so let's go back to the beginning because I can't remember exactly which packages they were wasn't that one wasn't that one? Oh, GTK2 is recommended because GTK3 is still experimental, right? I didn't see that. So this is the first one we need to reinstall. LibFM. So I'll just copy and paste these instructions. 
build it with GTK2 support. Run the tests. It's OK. And install. OK. It would have been, well, it's a bit late now because, like I say, I'm sure they're going to be removing this the book would have been nice to say like this has effects late and later packages not just this single one um, so that one as well PC man FM so again I'll just copy and paste this Install. And then we can go back to LX panel and attempt to reinstall this now. So let's run the configure by itself again. So that's that plugin requires wireless tools devel. So I need to disable that because although it's recommended, it looks like it's required by default. So I do need to do a help again on the configure. Um, let's see if there's anything specific. Probably what was the error again? That's that plugin. Yeah, it's looking for the wireless stuff there. So I wonder if use something like Disable net stat maybe. Disable net stat. Is that recognized? It would buy oh right. Okay, disable wireless tools devel. Did that work? No, I don't think that worked either. Um, let's have a look at the configure, see if we can find any clues. So this looks like the options here. Um, Can't see anything obvious there. To disable the wireless. Options 
unfortunately doesn't look like there's anything there at all. So there's a plug-in. Next that. Oh, plugins, right. Compile dynamic plugins. All builds with plugins, none builds none. Plugins prefix for minus and not built. Right, so I need to add with plugins with plugins equals minus net stat. That looks better. So LX panels requires menu cache, LX we've got them. Right, so that looks like that should build now. So I'm going to run make and keep my fingers crossed. And that seems to have worked. So make install. And that appears to be it. So that was LX panel. Which we've got on the list. Let's get rid of that. LX appearance next. Put that in. Downloaded yet? No. It's taking its time again. All right, it's already switched to Germany, so that's good. Get rid of that. LX appearance. Um, enable DBus we've got. Enable man. If you have installed optional dependencies, I wish to man, man pages. So yes, we have, so we can copy the configure and add in enable man so that looks good let's run make and make install and that's done So LX session next needs live unique. So I'll save that and a patch as well. Oops, what have I done there? Not sure what I've done there. That, get rid of that, that's right. So right click, save link as, save the patch. So lib unique, next. Lib unique. Um, what have we got here? We 
don't need the API. We don't need to disable the bus, do we? Oh, in favor of GD bus backend. Right, okay. So all we need to do is just copy and paste this then. No test suite. So we'll install. And that's done. Um, so now we need LSB tools. Now this talk that can be run standalone just to interrogate the LSB information that was created um, in LFS, which is details that's in that file there. So let's save that and copy that into the spreadsheet. Is it capital LSB, is it? Yes, it is. Build it with Python 3 and install. And that's done. So it's got this LSB release tool, which will just interrogate that file. And is it minus how you put in? Yes, it will just display the whole lot. Um, but you can pick out individual things depending on what switch you pass to the tool. So that's LSB tools. So now we can do LX session, which should have downloaded. Let's put. This into here. Give that a save. LSB. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, LX session. So we've got disable man, but remove. We've got the optional dependencies, which we have and enable gtk3 builds against three instead of two which is required anyway by libunique so again it's a bit ambiguous out which which is is gtk3 required by libunique or gtk2 um, in english that could refer to either of those Although it does point to GTK2 normally. Um, so that's built. Now let's install and tidy up. Next one we've got is LXDE common. And we've got a couple of dependencies, a notification demon such as either of those under display manager right so we're going to be installing an xfce and sddm later so i won't bother installing those just download lxd common yep there it goes So configuration, there's no information on the configuration, so we'll just copy and paste this. And 
install it and uh, update the icon database I think or MIME database and the icon cache so that's done you can start LXDE from run level 3 using Nexinit or from 5 using display manager so that's what we're doing now previously we would have to have done this to start it but we can now select it the X session starts the first thing you use virtual timer normally 7 you can switch to another switch back you may want to prefer to read it this business ok that's if you're starting it as with StarTex so that's LXDE done there's some applications which we can install so let's move on to those first of these is a lightweight image viewer GPIC view so I'll wait for that to download, there it is I'll tidy this up So it looks like straightforward copy and paste here to get this to build. And install. If you have XDG utils installed as a root user, you should run that command for the installed icon to be displayed in the menu item. So let's do that, paste that in. And that's done. Now LX appearance obconf to configure open box, right? Okay. So let's fetch that, put this in the spreadsheet. Okay, just configure and ins uh, build again. Install the package, and it's complete. Next input. Bigger keyboard and mouse, this one. Again, simple installation. Oops. Install it and it's done. LX R and R. So again, we'll download this. And you notice with all these packages, virtually all of them, there's no dependencies to install. There's only odd, odd dependency here and there because we've done so much work previously. It's bearing fruits now that we can just get on with building these packages with very little diversion to go and install other, other dependencies. So 
FX R and R. We can enable the man pages. We've got the dependencies. So let's add that in. Build the package and install. I think I did. Yep. Let's do LX task next. Again, straightforward instructions to build. And install. It's done. VTE next. Got here no extra options. Well, both this package and VTE, so there's two different versions of VTE. Right, so that switch ensures that they're not going to overwrite each other. Figured, let's build it. Run some checks. Looks all okay, there's no errors reported at the end. Make install, and that's complete. So, next, do LX terminal. Can enable man pages for this package by adding enable man. And delete that. Build it and install it. And that's complete. So that is LXDE complete now, so I'll just shut this tab down and what I'll do now is I'll save this, I'll quit and I'll quit this one as well, uh, I'm not sure if there's anything running there, let's have a look, jobs, oh it's just this terminal so I'll quit that one as well, that should have bought, yep. We'll finish at least, close that down, and I should be able to quit this now. Exit. So in theory now, um, we should have more options here, which we have. So let's try the ISWM session. And 
Is that it? Oh no, that's it there. So we've got a little button here with looks quite Windows 95 y actually. It's quite old, but it's obviously usable. There's Inkscape. Uh, let's have a look at the office database. It's got LibreOffice on here. In fact, it's got all of LibreOffice, so that looks like that's okay. Um, graphics, let's look for GIMP. Yeah, that's there, as is Draw, LibreOffice Draw. So you can see it's found a lot of the stuff, plus a lot more. These are Qt5 GUI programs that we um, built when we re rebuilt Qt. So you can see that's working. So yeah, it looks all, all good. Preferences, themes, yeah, it's all there, the looks of it. So you can see that's changed the look and feel of ISWM. Um, themes, sorry, that one there. Uh, motif, make it look like quite an old layout. So that's that. Let's put that back to how it was. Because the blue was it, I think. No, it wasn't that one. Oh, default. That must have been it. So let's close this. Get rid of these. So let's log out of, oh, what's this one? Oh, this is Inkscape, isn't it? Log out. And we'll go to another one we've just installed. We'll skip over LXD for a moment. Let's try open box. Log in again. And again, that's the simple desktop. We can center click and we get the options there. And we can right click to get a menu. So Firefox doesn't exist at the moment, but it looks like it's created default options. Let's try one of the office ones. Let's try calc. Oh, so that's one of the ones that's defaulting. Oh, is it open office? That's default. Yes, it is open office. So that needs to be updated. So it's quite out of date. Um, we haven't got any of these installed. We've got that one installed. That should run. Yes, it has. So that's all good. Let's try and run. Let's see if this loads up the browser. Yes, it does. So that's worked okay as well. So now let's log out. And let's try the next one, which is Sawfish. And again, this is another quiet one, is it? Yeah, center click for this one to get the menu up. So programs, graphics, GIMP. Yeah, that works fine. Don't know why it's decided to go down there, but never mind. Made itself a lot bigger than it should be for the uh, viewport. Anyway, center click. Let's try another one. There's the file manager again. Let's try that. That's all right. Development. So there's various programming things we've used or installed rather. So that looks like it's working okay. Uh, internet, there's Falcon, let's boot that up. Yep, that's working fine. Uh, what else have we got? Games, there's a few games there. Office, let's try Office again. Spreadsheet, yep, that's working. And you can see that the core 
of each of these packages looks the same the way that things are rendered it's the windowing part because it's the windowing system that differs between all of, the, all of these but the actual core of the program retains its own identity so uh, is there any others we can look at oh let's look at LX terminal yep so yeah it's all all working fine shut these down and finally go to LXDE which is is more like a desktop environment so let's log out Going to log out. Log out from session. All right, let's do quit sawfish. Yep, that's better. So I'll select LXDE now. This is a very lightweight desktop environment, so you'll see it's a bit more fully featured. So we've got a nice menu here. Um, there's a few system tools you've seen we've opened, uh, we've built, sorry. Um, yeah, just generally nice, a quite nice little environment. I do like this one. So let's make that fit the window a bit better. Of course, if we use a, an environment with bigger taskbars, then that will probably disappear off the bottom, but it should be okay. Let's look for a terminal. Let's use the LX terminal now. Should be a bit more featured than the basic X term. I'll stick that up there. Stretch this down as before. I'll leave a little gap there for people. Some people say about the some of the commands I'm typing in at the bottom when it scrolls down, they get hidden by the um, pop up on the video on YouTube, so I try and leave a little gap there. Let's see if we can adjust the um, font size. Default to 10. Let's try 16. I'm um, not sure how many characters we've got width-wise now. Make sure we've got enough. So 16 is too big. Let's try 15 or 13, or 14 rather, 15. No, it's still not quite enough. So preference is 14. Okay, that's plenty big enough now. And what other fonts were there? A space, let's change it to that one. So that might have changed the number of characters across now. No, it stayed the same, so that's okay. Uh, Let's see if there's anything about scroll back. Turn those on, might be useful. Scroll back. So that default is just 10,000, but it should be enough, hopefully. That should be it then. Hide scroll bar, hide. Hide hide. So this was 85, wasn't it? Can I pick that up? Yes, I can. Oh, it was 86 by. Get around 40. Right, 
it, hopefully that's not too low. So sources, BLFS. Uh, this white's not as white, it's a bit more grey, so it doesn't look as bright. But that shouldn't cause a problem. So, okay, so I'm in LXDE now. I presume those settings will be retained every time I boot up, so I hope they are. Let's now get the office calc up with the spreadsheet. File, recent documents, BLFS installation. And I'll just put that there so that I can click on it from below the terminal for quick access. Yeah, that's good. So what shall I do next? Let's have a look. Gnome. Oh, I guess I could do XFCE next and then maybe LXQT and then maybe do either Gnome and KD or some of the larger applications perhaps. I'll see how it goes um, as to what to do. So you PDF view, let's have a quick look at that. Oh, it's a PDF document view, so that could be a, an optional thing to build. Right, so yeah, I'll do XFCE next. So it looks like we've installed four of these early packages already. Um, which was earlier on, there's one there. XF Conf, XFC UI and XO, yeah, so we've done them. So we can just basically jump, well, let's go straight to the top actually and just follow through to Garcon or Garson in case there's any extra information. There's some here. Again, it says it's fast and low on system resources. Build again, building the order presented for these res resolution of dependencies, so they've helped us there. So we don't have to stress over working out what order to build things in. So, this Garcon next is what we need. There's no dependencies, so we'll put that in there. Download the package. Oh, why has that gone so big now? save and we can start building it um, I think I might actually make this white a little bit brighter it's quite dark uh, edit preferences so the foreground uh, let's try 225 to Five, two, two, five. Let's try that. That's a bit brighter. It's not too bright, but it's not too dark. So, okay. So again, I think these are all quite small packages. It won't take long to install. So it's just a case of plodding on through them to get them installed. Okay, so make install and that's done. So XFCE4 panel, 
So this looks like it needs a different version of libwnck because we've already installed that um, somewhere. There it is there, yes, yeah, a different version. So we do need to install that different version there. So let's download that. This was four. Uh, don't need the API reference, so again, just copy and paste. And Ninja install. Oops. It's done. So XFC four panel, download that. Uh, did I put that package in? I didn't, did I? This one lib xfc4. No, it's just says xfc4. Xfc4 panel. So again, just copy and paste. Okay, make install. That's done. Next we've got Thunar, which I believe is a file manager, yes. So let's do that one next. There's no oh well, there's one runtime dependency, so let's get that up next. But other than that, put Thunar in. Download it. So there's a system D file that's not required and we'll just copy and paste the commands and when it's done install it. Okay, install And move on to Thunar Volman. So I'll tidy that up. And we'll do this runtime dependency for Thunar. We've got all the dependencies again. So let's get this downloading first. Put that in there. Extract it. Oh, why is that not? Why is that not working? Oh, I haven't. 
There was one previously, wasn't it, that was downloading. There it is. Tumblr. Right, CD it should be. Okay, so configure and make. Make install. Tidy that up. Did I put that in the spreadsheet? Yes, I did. So I can get rid of that one. And we're now onto Sunar Volman. So download that. Again, straightforward instructions to build. And install. So that's done. So the next one actually is Tumblr, which we've just done. So we can skip over that. Straight on to XFC for App Finder. Download that. Right again. Is it because I'm center clicking to download it? I wonder. Let me try that again. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure what I did there. XFCE for App Finder. Make again. Make install. sudo minus e. Make install, and that's done. Next, we've got XFC for Power Manager. So you can see all these app finders and power managers aren't the sort of things you get with window uh, managers which is what makes XFCE for and LXD um, desktop environments because uh, they've got a lot more added functionality. So let's see if this downloads OK. Save. Um, yep, that's there. OK. Must be doing something silly that I'm not noticing. XFC for Power Manager. Configure and make. Make install. And it's done. XFC for settings, so this needs GNOME icon theme as a runtime, so I'll just get that opened up. Uh, what's happening here? Has the internet gone again? Yep, looks like my internet's gone yet again. So I have to wait for it to come up.
Right, there it is. So let's put this in the spreadsheet. And extract it. XFC4 settings. Uh, I've got some additional options here, so let's add them in. Enable sound settings and enable pluggable dialogues. Enable you power support, and yet looks like we've installed that. Let's save that and search for you power. Yes, we have installed it, so I don't know why it's not found that. Unless there's some other reason why you know it's preventing it from. Um, installing. Let's take a look at the configure help. Enable you power glib. Default is no, so let's try turning that on being as we've got you power. Let's see if that helps. Yep, it seems like that's what was needed, so maybe that's something that could be added to the book. Let's build it and install it when it's completed. I'll just check this is in the spreadsheet, it is. So, make install. And that's that one done. So I'm going to tidy that up. Settings was that yes. Now I'm going to install the GNOME icon themes, and that requires icon naming utils. And it looks like there's a well, there's a Perl. I thought it might have been Python module. XML simple. So oh, that's because I let it select. It was in the search, so let's get rid of that. Paste that over. Download that. XML uh, simple. Two two five to make sure check the version sometimes in case there's more than one version. So build and test that. That's a pass, so let's install and it's done. So icon naming utils next. Oh, I see what's happening. I'm pressing enter and it's defaulting to cancel. Yeah, cancel the cancel button's highlighted, so I need to do OK there. Then I can press enter. That's why I'm missing the fact that I thought I'd been clicking on the download links and wondering why the downloads weren't there or where they've been going to. So that's why. So icon naming utils. So straightforward build again. And install. That's done.
So that was a runtime dependency, as I remember. Oh no, it's this one, isn't it? I haven't seen my icon yet. So we've got all the dependencies. Let's download package, copy the name into the spreadsheet. Extract Oops, icon. So build it and install. Okay, that's built, so we can, oh, that was the install, wasn't it? Okay, yep, that's right. So, yep, tidy that one up. Icon theme. So that was... Yeah, the runtime dependency, that's right. And we've got XFC4 settings. Okay, so we can move on to XF desktop. Figure and make and install, and it's done. XFWM with no dependencies. That we need to build. Put that in there. Okay, reinstall. Oh, that's gone. Oh, sorry, not reinstall, install the package. We're done. XFWM. XFC4 session. Um, well, we've got some recommendations here first. So X screensaver. This is one we would have installed anyway. Gives you some extremely nice screensavers. Need GDM four four dot one Gnome session Save
running no wonder Wayland. Right, so this fix is the fix running under Wayland by the looks of it. Install gnome. So it doesn't look like there's any extra options. Uh, what's this in general? Oops, yeah, just copy and paste this. Which is sufficient. So let's become the root and install. Move documentation to a version directory. The package creates two desktop files, so we're going to remove them by the looks of it. And the startup sequence of known way they need to create a debug session. So we need to do this. That's that package. So this is all about starting GNOME, the looks of it. Um, and that's starting it by uh, manually. So we're not doing that anymore. We're using LightDM or we'll be using other display managers. So don't need to do anything with that. So let's get rid of that one. Tidy up. And go to GNOME Shell, which needs GCR. Okay, so let's download that. Both GCR 3 and 4 co-installable, so we're installing GCR 4. This version of the package is used to support GTK 4 applications such as GNOME Shell, which is what we're going to be installing next, and Epiphany 44. Okay. So, we've installed GTK 4. And that's for API documentation. So we don't need to change any of the installation options. Just copy and paste. Ninja test. And that's done. Now we can do Ninja install. And that's done. And now GNOME Shell. Again, we need Mutter. Now, I vaguely remember when I last built BLFS a few years ago, I had problems installing this or getting it to work. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was compiling. So hopefully I'm not going to get the same trouble this time. I imagine it's something I've done wrong. Uh, but I seem, well, I can't remember. I vaguely remember doing GNOME once and not getting it to work. I always seem to have trouble with GNOME because it's so many dependencies. Um, unlike KDE, it's quite simple. Although there are still loads of modules to install, they're all fairly straightforward to to build. Right, this requires GeoClue and GeoCode. They sound like geolocation type things which are probably going to report your location around which as I say for me is a bit of a privacy concern especially if you're on a mobile device um, and you're installing or using Linux so I don't know if I'll be able to get away with not using them as their requirements whether I can turn some settings off or not I don't know I shall try it but I may have to turn them on to get this to work. So gnome settings daemon. Um, I downloaded that, didn't I? So let's see what happens when we run the configuration. 
So some options to set there. So there's no options here. I'm going to look at the meson options. Look for geo. No, there's no options there. Oh, there's a funny character there. Not sure what that's all about. That doesn't look good at all. What's happened there? Is that something I've done? Not sure what that is. No, it's as if it's something in that file. Um, well, I'll try the setup command. Yeah, it's failed straight away. Let's look at that means on the bill. Let's do a cat of it. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to install it to get this to work. So I'll do those next. So Geo Clue. back uh, so let's put a few more lines in here Extract Geo Crew. And let's have a look at the options here. Maybe I can disable something here. Right, so I can't remember if I've installed a Modem manager, but certainly I've got 3G, so that can go in straight away. Disable the GPS back end. CDMA source equals false. Well, again, I think I'll disable that. I think I installed modem manager. NMEA. So these look like sources for the geo data. So yeah, I'm gonna. Although I know I've got Avahi installed, I'm going to disable these. Demo agent. Right, I'll disable the demo. Yeah, it won't bother with the demo either. Yeah, disable as much as possible. Um, in fact, I'm going to. work completely because we're on a separate line is it right I'm going to quickly look at this meson build meson options oh yeah this is there something wrong with the terminal here it's coming up with this problem carrot oh, I wonder if it's the bell maybe that I turned on that's possible let's turn that off then the visual bell it could be what it is Right, maybe it's the audible one. So that could possibly be a little bug there. Something's not compiled properly, maybe. No, it's still there, okay. Not sure why that is. Have to see if we get it with it. Well, it's the first time seen in, in any terminal, so it could be something to do with that X terminal. Uh, LibGeo Clue. Convenience library. I might even turn that one off actually. Geo clue, let's do that one. So I'll put this back in. 
because for some reason that first part was missing. Oh, probably because it just took that line as the comment. One views are. Oh, that's got totally confused there. Let's copy this again. So I'll copy all of that. And minus D Geo Clue uh, Lib Geo Clue wasn't it, I think. Equals false dot dot. No, it wasn't. Lib Geo Clue. Lib Geo Clue. Well, minus capital D. That might help. Oh, what happened there? Is the capital D has gone in the Geo Crew. Oh, what's happening here? Is there something wrong with this terminal, perhaps? Let's try that again. Minus capital D, Lib G Geo Crew equals false. Dot dot. That's better. I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, right, okay, so. This may still not work actually because I imagine it's not going to install the library that is required by a known session, was it? I think. Anyway, let's try it. I may have to reinstall this. And sudo minus e ninja install. Okay. So that's geo clue. Um, close that down. We need to do geo code glib. So yeah, again, this sort of thing is probably verging onto a bit intrusive for my liking. But I'll install it, um, not understanding fully what it's about. So, time, let's see if we have geo code and glib. Right, okay, so it looks like just copy and paste this package. That built okay, we can test. One fail. Set locale should be null. So is that because of my language setting. Oh no, we'll do set it on test. I'm not sure why that's failed then. It could be that that's actually missing. Uh, yes, it is. It does actually say there. So that's why. So let's now install code glib. So that should be in there, shouldn't it? Yep. Now let's attempt to do GNOME settings again. So we do these two sets again. Make a temporary build directory. And we'll just copy this and see what happens about that geo clue. G weather, right? That's one I tried to avoid earlier on, isn't it? So I'm going to have to install that as well. Now it's funny that's not mentioned there. Oh, hang on a minute, it might be. Yes, it is, right? So let's put this one in. I'll leave that there.
download this. G weather. Uh, oh, looks like I've what have I done there? Delete sheet. Oh, that was an old error uh, result I had. I never really checked that. I'll get rid of that. Delete sheet. Yes. Right. So lib G weather. The API, so it looks like we just build and install. Don't want the API documentation. We need to install this before we test, and now we can run the test. It says one. Test is known to fail, uh, but in our case it hasn't, so that's good. So that's done. Now let's go back to GNOME settings, back into the build directory, and we'll rerun the setup command so knees on setup to make sure we get the right one so it should be that one build types release d system d equals false no it, so it does need the lib geo crew so there's me trying to short circuit and it's not worked so we'll have to rebuild geo clue Geo clue. So let's make the build first and then I'll recall the geo clue setup, which is that one there. So I'll just delete this now. Okay, where's GeoClue? So I presume it's that one there. So it's enabled anyway if it is that one. So now Ninja to build it and reinstall it. Oops. Ah, what have I done there? Better. So it seems the Geo stuff's quite built into GNOME settings. There's no way of avoiding it, the looks of it. Well, certainly not easily, anyway. Um, and it is a requirement of Mutter as well. So you can't avoid it. So back to G settings and hopefully this time sorry gnome cd gnome settings hopefully this time it will build so mise on not that one not that one not that one it's that one no gcr4 thought we'd done that one GCR4, did I miss that? I've never done that one. Right, I'm going to delete everything in this directory. And retry that. No, it's definitely not having it. How strange. Um, I wonder if I disabled something there, or is it because it needs these 
No, it doesn't need these geo clue things. Unless it finds them silently. So let's rebuild these GCR. Ah, oh, that's what happened. I built three. Now that could be a problem because that might have been built with the wrong settings. So let's get GCR three up. I might have to rebuild this one, unfortunately. Yes, looks like I will have to do the different installation instructions. Oh, that's a shame. So GCR three. Uh, what options we've got? Check the K equals false. All right, so it looks like I can just copy and paste this. Uh, yeah, what I was saying about making sure we've got the right version, well, I didn't notice that I was using the wrong version there. I thought I'd downloaded GCR 4 and I hadn't. So no API documentation. Let's do the test. It's built sudo minus e uh, ninja install and that's done. So that's GCR three. Uh, did that install to GCR? Oh, I might need to go back one more. Right, so it's rebuilt through that accident. So let's save this properly. GCR4. So again, this is just a copy and paste. test all okay and I'm not sure why these are copying and pasting sometimes now I must be doing something different again so that's done GCR 44 that's it right once more I'll try known settings Find the meson command, which is that one. That's better at last. So hopefully this will build now with Ninja. Run tests. Right, same can find Mutter, but it is optional. So I might have to. Right one recommended and not right. Uh, might be worth rebuilding this just to test with Mutter when Mutter is installed, which is directly after this. So yeah, we've got some failures there. Looks like everything failed. Test power. We must have Python Dbus mock installed, which we've got. Well, some tests may fail depending on the init system in use, so that could be because we haven't got system D. Um, so it might be pointless re retesting this after Mutter, but um, I'll carry on anyway. Uh, Ninja install. And I'll tidy up. So I'll shut that down and I'll cut that there, put that there and put rebuild after mutter and looks like mutter is the next one. So let's download mutter.
Right, so we've installed sysprof, so we can just put that in. So let's let's do these one at a time. Let's do the build directory. Meson setup and check these here. So build up these test force. Right, so we'll leave that. Profile equals false, we can set to true. And test equals true. Alright, okay, test. Cut us and fill build type of release. What does it say here? Alright, oh, it's an external package, so I'm not going to run the test, so I'll just leave that as it is and run ninja So now let's install it. If you wish to run the tests, so we're not running the tests. Um, so starting Mutter, Mutter is normally used as a component of GNOME Shell, but can be used as a standalone mode in Compositor 2 on the Virtual Console. Right, I don't think I'll test that at the moment. Um, I'll just do some testing maybe in GNOME if there's any problems with that. It might be the best thing to do. So that's Mutter installed. I'm going to reinstall GNOME settings to see if that uh, tests any better. Now that Mutter's installed and Mutter was a requirement testing um, oh no sorry it wasn't for testing it was just optional so it's just an additional bit of functionality uh, so let's put this down here now put that it's been rebuilt and I'll mark that off as done. No was no settings, wasn't it? Yep. So once again put these set commands in. And then build it. Run the 10 tests again, which again I expect to fail, but um, so, oh, that one's passed, so maybe Mutter has made a difference.
Right, so that looks like we've got one extra test or, or one test that passed out of that and just nine failed that time. So it's a little bit better. Um, maybe it's because of dependencies or maybe it's because of the init. Um, I don't know why most of them to do with the power when we've installed the power and made sure that was installed. So um, just have to go with this and see how it is. Like I said, I've had problems with Gnome before in the past and it's probably more down to my lack of knowledge about Gnome. Um, the only time I've ever used it when I used to use Red Hat. Um, and I didn't particularly like it then. I did prefer KDE as it was then. I think KDE 2 or 3. So that's that. We'll see how we go. Um, so right, I need to reinstall that, don't I? And so let's get back there. So is it Ninja installed? Did I need Ninja install? No, that's next. Ninja install. That's done. Tidy up. And we did mutter. So back to GNOME shell. We've got GNOME auto AR. this in so again I'll just copy and paste this on the tests one test for looks of it and install. That's done. So next we've got GNOME Bluetooth. We need G Sound. Okay, download that. I don't know why that's, I mean, this is what happened to me before. Let me um, delete these and reinsert them. See if that helps. That's better. So, tar. G sound copy and paste and ninja install that's done. So this is now known Bluetooth. Build that and run some tests. All passed, so we can install. Uh, Bluetooth. 
back to gnome shell we've got some runtime dependencies so I'll install them after this so let's fetch gnome shell Test results of Mutter compiled and installed tests also. Right, so this could be why I had problems last time, maybe. We haven't got the test, so we can't really test this. Yeah, again, if you're in a SysV environment, some tests will fail. And, and if you've got multi-monitor, it may fail as well. So it's not particularly reliable with the sounds of it quite a few exceptions especially as we haven't run the test with Mutter or built the test for Mutter and we're in system V environment so let's do the usual create the temporary build directory copy the meson setup command and check what options we might want to adjust doesn't look like there's going to be many Opens packaging out the yeah, I think we'll just accept that and build it. Okay, so just ninja installed and that's done. So now I've got to install the runtime dependencies. So that was GNOME shell. Got that there. Let's tidy this up. So no backgrounds, no dependencies. Straightforward build. Very quick. And install. And that's that. Next one we've got GNOME Control Center. So it's got a dependency for a control a network panel. Okay, I think I'll just take the default setup options, reading those. Run some tests, or a test, and that's okay. And install. I'll put that one in, yes. Uh, so next is Cups PK Helper. So again, straightforward copy and paste and install. 
It's done. Close that one down. And lastly, it looks like we've got Gnome Color Manager. Again, um, if doc book build right, okay, so we do need to do this because we've got doc book utils installed. Just copy that. Run ninja test. That looks okay. And ninja install. There's no color manager. So now we should be okay to build GNOME Control Center. Recommending this. That's right, so if you don't install the recommended, it's not strictly required, but you might not get the expected results if you don't install them. Uh, something there about upgrading, so we're not doing that. So let's just extract GNOME Control Center. And it looks like we can just copy and paste this. So it says for the tests, it must have a Python DBS mock module installed, which I'm pretty certain we've got. So we should be okay to run the tests. So I run them now. It looks like that was all successful. So we'll install and tidy up. That was known control center and we've just got telepathy mission control now So simple copy and paste. We're not interested in the API documentation. Run some tests. That looks okay, no errors. Make install. And that's done. Now we can do GNOME Shell. Right, we've already downloaded it, but looks of it, so let's cancel that. Uh, let's put this in the list. Got some options here possibly so let's create the build directory copy the meson setup command and check type patch patch 
Right, so let's move to another example that looks at where they used to be a patch, but not anymore, but they've not updated the manual. So that needs to be removed. System D false, test false. Remove the switch if you want to build a test, but then these on fail if. Right, so again, we can't test. Extensions tool. I see, so yeah, we can just accept the default options. Run Ninja to build. And Ninja install. So that's Gnome Shell. Back to GDM, which we can now install. Also, this is the display manager. So I'm not sure if this is going to cause problems with light DM, which it probably will do. Um, let's see if we can switch between them. Oh, here's some information here actually about setting the init tab to run level 5. They've got a set command to do exactly what we did manually, the looks of it. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen if we have two display managers running. So, I'll install it. We might have to do a bit of um, poking around on the command line to disable one or the other. Um, sudo one c su. So we'll create this group and user for GDM. Um, let's extract it now. Run said. Uh, we've got a few options here. So we can set the initial VT that it runs on. So I think I'll probably leave that off. Um, so we did create the LFS release file, so we don't need that. And GDM sessions shows. I think what we need to do is just copy and paste this. We've done the sed command, yeah, the first one at least. So let's put that in. That looks like that's finished. sudo minus c su install the package and remove looks like some units for system D. Default values. So I haven't got NVIDIA GPU on this, so I don't need to do that. Let's install the boot script. Like I said, I'm not sure what's going to happen with two of these running. So BLFS boot scripts, run that. We don't need to do that change to init tab because it's already done. So that's that part done. Let's tidy up GDM. That's there. So go back to screen saver now and install that. Let's download it. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, that's not good. Let's 
So does that mean it's moved? We might have to look for this on a mirror. Okay, so let's put that in and search for the file. Uh, okay, FTP. And here's where we want to go the Oregon State University server. You can see it's got these old, all these old versions. And we want 606, and there it is there. So let's click on that, save that. Wait for it to download. Right, yeah, it seems like something's gone wrong again. As I say, it's probably because we're installing other libraries. That could be what's causing that. Wait for this to finish. It's come down quite slowly for some reason. Right, okay, so now I'm going to just double check the MD5 sum as it hasn't come directly from where it should have come from. So MD5 sum X screen saver. And that's the same number as is what's in the book, so that's okay. Let's extract it. The switch allows some demos to be installed as the ID route, which is needed in order to ping other hosts. So that might be a security issue, you might not want to add that in. Depends whether you're on just a local network or a wider network, I guess. So let's compile and build. Okay, that's done. Let's install it. Let's complete, let's update the book. And tidy up. Screen saver. Shut that down. Polk it no next. So we've got all of these. Let's save that and download that patch. patch first of all and nothing about the configuration so we just take the standard configuration and make and uh, install the package uh, I, I clicked on something in configuring Polkid GNOME so we need to Put in a configuration there. So let's put 
put that in and that's done. So poke it gnome. So now we can build just check that. Yeah, that's in there. Now we can build XFC for session. to go back here so now we've got all the dependencies so we can do configure uh, no other options so just configure and make Install configuring. We need to do this as root. And then starting XFC4. Again, if you're doing a manual start with StarTex, you need to set your X in it RC, but because we're using a display manager, we won't need to do that. So that's that one done. Oops, XFC4. And move on to the applications. So there's a few um, applications here. which are specific to XFC4, but like all these programs, they can be run no matter what window manager you're using or desktop environment. So parole, we've got all the dependencies. Let's insert some more blank lines here. So this is simple. Okay, let's install. And that's done. Next we've got XFC4 terminal. It needs the newer version of VTA. That's got all its dependencies, so let's download that. So VTA 0.72. this switch if you want to enable it right so we need to do some editing here as we have these dependencies installed so we can omit the switch or we can just change it to true so it makes it a bit more obvious as to what we've done uh, if you do want do not want to enable so we'll have that the API we can build a GTK4 widget by the looks of it, so let's do that as well. Okay, so we run that. And then Ninja. We 
danger test and finally when this is completed with a full pass we can install the new version of ET 0 0.72 Let's do this one here. So now XFC4 terminal. Click on make. And install. And that's complete. XF burn next. So this has got a couple of, well, three dependencies. One is runtime. So the first we've got is lib burn. Did that again didn't I? I just pressed enter there just realized so configure and make We can build the HTML documentation and become root to install the package and install the documentation we just created. And that's done. Oops. So that's libburn, lib iso fs. So we can copy and paste this. Create HTML documentation. Come root to install the package and the HTML documentation we created, and that's done. So we've just got this CDR DAO to install afterwards, runtime dependency. Let's download XF burn. Build it and afterwards install. done. So I'll leave that there because we'll come back to carry on with the last of the XFCE applications. We'll just install CDRDAO now. Okay. So let's go back. there 
CDR DIO. There's no other options mentioned, so we can build this package. install it like that reload page right so now we go on to Ristretto download it Straightforward build. And install. Next, XFC for DevTools. There's probably something most people wouldn't want, but we'll install it anyway. Figure and make make check and install. That's done. Uh, dev, sorry, dev tools. That's it. Next, we've got XFC for notified daemon. Configure the make. Install. Now we did run one of these before on Notify Demon, and it didn't work, so I'm hoping this things are a bit more of a high level environment. This should now work. No, it's still got the same error. Graphical environment, so I'm not sure why that's working. Oh, oh, sorry, not working still. So, that may be an issue that needs to be revisited. Um, it could be it only works in XFC4, I doubt it. Um, or some other issue that's you know something else has not been built. So let's move on to XFC4 Pulse Audio plugin. Um, well we've got a couple of dependencies here. Keybinder. I thought we'd done that one. Is it another version? Keybind. O three one. Oh yes, a completely different version. Let's do that one first. Um, okay, so it's version three. So again, just copy and paste this. Don't need anything else. Okay. 
install and it's done. And PAVU control, which is runtime anyway, but we can install that, I guess, in a minute. So let's do the Pulse Audio plugin. Save the file. XFC for Pulse Audio plugin. Straightforward build. done uh, also, yeah, that's it so that's the last of the XFC for applications we've just got POVU control to install done now in theory I think this should work as it is yes it's worked straight away um, so basically you can just control if you've never used before the channels the hardware um, on the system all the audio devices Right, so that can be shut down. I think that's probably it for XFC4, so I'll shut that down. Um, I guess what I could do now is just test XFCE. Um, there may be a few of these programs, so what I need to do is to Save that and close it. Uh, I'll leave that. I'll shut this down, I think. Uh, no, let's see if it, it might start when I go back into LXDE. So let's go into logout. So, oh, that's nice. It's got a little LXDE icon there now the one I've selected so I wonder if that's one of the icons that we've installed let's see if any others have changed let's try gnome well we haven't got gnome yet so it's not going to work anyway um, we can try it but I doubt if anything will work oh we have got something so we've got the basic interface for the looks of it so that's good that shows that works. That's promising for when we do actually install the rest of GNOME. Log out. I'll try the Wayland. I'm not sure if it will work or not. Yep, that's worked fine, so that's okay. Yeah, that looks like that's working fine. So that's good. I'll log out of this. And again, we'll see that when we actually build the rest of it. Oh, right, it's switched over to GDM now. <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, we'll stick with this for the time being. Um, so I want to select the session. Um, I'm not sure how you do that from within GNOME, so it's a bit of a pain. This is all the... Yeah, 
you know, I'm not sure how you can select the session from here. It's a bit of a pain, that is. If I go in here, it'll just take me to the GNOME environment, uh, desktop environment. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, now I'm really confused. <laughs> uh, right, so that's obviously because I've got GDM enabled and um, light DM enabled. So what I'm going to do is to disable GDM because um, I think light DM is a bit easier to use. So let's log back in again. Uh, right, let's get the browser up. And a terminal. Let's get the next terminal up. So it has remembered the setting, but it's tried to centralize it. So let's put it back up here. Um, sudo minus e su. Let's go to um, sources BLFS and then to the BLFS boot scripts. And I'll do make. Uh, it's the GDM ones I want. So is it make install GDM? Yes, it is. So what I want to do is to remove any of the files. So XDM's gone in there. Ah, oh, okay, I see. It's a setting here, the looks of it. So it's overridden what's previous, previously been installed. So if I edit that. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here with this. Every time I open via. So all I need to do is to put that in and take that out but I could actually enable the LXDM because we've no that's XFCE or XFCE isn't it we've just installed so if I save that okay press right buttons that should be all I need to do so I'll better close these down properly Uh, log out. So, you, oh no, we haven't got that back right. What I'm going to do is to reboot to get the light DM back. Well, hopefully, I'll get it back so that we can quickly test XFC for. Yep, that's got it back. So now this enables me to easily set the session. So I want to test that. Oh, yes, that's got its own icon. So it looks like GNOME hasn't, unless that is the GNOME one, that little uh, spanner. Fluxbox hasn't. Openbox didn't have one. Sawfish hasn't. TWM hasn't. Okay. So let's log into this. And yeah, oh, that's a snazzy desktop. So yeah, we've got icons on desktop. We've got a menu bar at the top and one at the bottom. Let's open the terminal. I presume that's the X, XCE4, XFCE4 terminal. So that looks all right. Let's try the browser. So it doesn't know which is our preferred one. Oh, it only knows about the text ones, okay. Let's look for Falcon in the applications. There it is there. 
Yep, that's loaded up in its position as usual. And like I say, because this top menu bar is bigger, it's kind of got a little bit lost off the bottom there. Let's try the folders. Yep, that works fine. Nice clear icons. So that seems to work well. Let's just try one or two of the little applications that we've installed. Let's try this one. Or let's try GIMP. Should work. It has done. Yep. And Ristretto was one of the applications just installed. Um, well, we'll have to find an image somewhere. I'm not sure where there are any. But that obviously works. Multimedia. Parole was the media player. That's loaded up okay. It's wanting us to open a, a file. Uh, let's try the calc. Yep, that's worked okay. Uh, I don't know what else we can try. Let's try Thunar File Manager we installed. Oh yes, that is the file manager we, we've just seen, isn't it? So, looks like it's all working okay. And one last thing I can show you is that if we now log out log out and set the environment back to oh, that's interesting it's changed the background here as well go back to our xde and log in um, those applications we installed will work as as all the others have done like um, GIMP and so on they'll work perfectly well in whatever window or desktop environment we're in like that so that shows that that is all working fine as well so in the next session I'm going to carry on and build uh, some more um, possibly let's have a look let's see what uh, probably probably LXQT I think looks like there's a fair chunk of work to do there um, and then I might do GNOME and then finally KDE and then just build some of the top level app applications to finish off